Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. John L. What's going on, Good bro? Good to see you, my friend. Take me to the river, I want to go. I'll go. Take me to your river, I want to go. I don't even know who sings that. You don't know who sings that song? No. Uh, Leon Bridges. Leon Bridges. Yeah, he's like a, a folk country singer, black dude. I think he's uh, Louisiana, uh, where he's from. But about five years ago, he had a very popular song. That was like a song that really charted well. It was called The River. And that was he, that. That was that song. And then there he, he is. And then what he does is You he, where, Jamie? Like, you know that dude? I, I've seen him before, yeah. I don't know that I know that song. But this song is like... He's had other songs, but for some reason, this song resonated with a lot of people mm. in the country, man. It was like him reminiscing with um, going to a place that made him feel good in the river. I hope when we go over to Spotify, we can play it. I don't think. I go, oh, I could take me to your river. I want to go. I'll go. Oh. That's pretty <laughs> much it. That's the one part everybody knows. It's acceptable now for people to wear like neck car- scarves. Are you being insulted? Neckerchiefs? No, not at all. It's what do you say though? If you had wore that on any other time, I'd be like, "What is on your neck?" And I would explain it to be a gator. Right, a gator. I know what it is. I know what a gator is. Yeah, I hunt. this this is what it is. It's my yeah, gator. You, you wear them when you're sneaking up on animals. Or you don't people. Wear them in or that people. Color. <laughs> well, that color is not. You can't sneak up on anybody. Gay or pride. People. <laughs> Gay pride. <laughs> Well, it's, there's this a lot of colors be, in that. Yeah, I guess that's a rainbow. Yeah, this not is not a traditional. This rainbow. is a liberal, liberal gay, Li- liberal gator. Yep, it's accepted by anything. Gay people, black people, Hispanic people. Tri- I'm sorry. No worries. My baby mother asking me about weed. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't like me? <laughs> I thought you don't like me. Why you keep blowing me up about weed? You said you don't like me. She likes your weed. I mean, they like something, man. What happened to your thumb? I got shot. Who shot you? That's a question I haven't found the answer to. Really? It was, this shit happened so quick, Joe. I didn't really get a, get a good look at a person, the person that shot me. Um, Not too many people around to witness it, but I have the wound to show that I got shot. What was the situation? I was, my dog, I, you know, I got a little, I got a new She's dog. She's adorable. Listen. That's as adorable as a dog gets, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that little cutie. <laughs> Yo, can you see a, her on on camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, this is my emotional support. That's dog. Maggie. Yeah, that's Maggie. Maggie, come here, sweetie. Come here, Maggie. Come here, honey. She's a dog. She doesn't know what coffee is. She's like, mm, she don't know. I'm she know what weed that. is, but she don't know what coffee is. But Maggie. I was protecting her. Some Hi. people were trying. Joe, you want to hear the story about how I got shot or what? Yeah. I was protecting her honor, <laughs> right? I was protecting her. From a hell of bullets. It was a gang. It was a lot of people. I don't remember all of that, but I got shot in my motherfucking thumb. Where were you? In the streets. Oh, just regular? Yeah, I was in the streets. <laughs> I was in the streets. No, not just the streets. The streets. No, I was no, just in the streets. No town. No, just the streets. And that happens sometimes, Joe. You put yourself, you're hanging in the streets, you put yourself in some unforgiving situations, and that's what happened to me, and that's how I got my motherfucking thumb shot the fuck off. And that's the story I'm talking, that's the story that I'm sticking to. So you got caught in the crossfire. A hail of bullets. Jesus Christ. 45 shots rang out. Really? Mm-hmm. Legitimately? Pop, 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 pop. Wow. And this is the only injury I sustained. Well, I'm very, very happy that that's the only injury you sustained. You're not happy about it, Joe, because when well, I... I love you. Come on. I know you love me, but when I told you I got shot, you continued to question me about... Well, Donnell, that's because you're Donnell. Right, but you continued it's, to... I didn't question you like I didn't believe you. You did, 100%. You but didn't you said me. it so casually. That's what you... I said, do you want a drink? You said, I can't. I'm on antibiotics. <laughs> I said, "What happened?" You? I got shot. That's it. No, <laughs> usually, that's, any of any of the, my other friends who've been shot. If I said, "Hey, man, what happened?" and they said, "I got shot," it right. wouldn't just end right there. They would say, "It's the craziest story ever, man." Uh, yeah, but I was you on don't my way people. To the, on my way to the car, and I had my little dog. And right. I was protecting her, and, and that's the story know. that I told. But the thing that you didn't believe me. If, you, if, if someone said they got I shot, believe you. you can't say I didn't believe you. That's not true. It didn't look the, the look of your face was well, like it's unusual the way you were describing it. 
I got shot. And then you wouldn't say anything more. So like, <laughs> what you, black people don't... No, how, he, what happened? How'd you get shot? Well, you remember I had a disagreement with so-and-so? <laughs> well, we finally had an opportunity. Our paths crossed. We found in a situation where those energies came together. We was like, how are we going to settle this? Right? It wasn't like that. I understand. It wasn't like that. It was a... Okay, so you, you don't, don't want to get specific about details no i don't want it to get I specific i just want you to respect the fact that i got shot i believe that you got shot i do right. respect it i'm sad that you got shot but i'm glad you're okay i'm better i'm good and so good. how is your thumb doing is it gonna be all right yep it's gonna be good you know we got all the bullet fragments out of it you know we avoided the surgery so i'm gonna be good just gotta get the range of motion back oh that's real good they didn't have to do any surgery in tendons or anything like that nope i got lucky I have a friend who cut his finger on a window, man, and he never got his fingers back again. His fingers are like this, curled. I know. Everybody knows a motherfucker like that, and we've all made fun of that motherfucker. Mm. We've made fun of the person that you know that don't have a thumb, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, doing this after me surviving this gunshot shit, just buttoning my pants become a task that I took advantage, I took, took for granted. Right. The point I'm making is that you're lucky to have all of your limbs, all of your shit on your body. Yep. And you don't appreciate it until one of them motherfuckers gone. Well, I think that's the case with everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't appreciate how good we had it before the lockdown, before COVID came around. Nobody appreciated how good we really had it. We was living in a moment. It, we were also spoiled. We were spoiled by how good everything was. But we didn't think it was spoiled because that was what was going on. Right. Until shit shifted and then same thing like you lose your thumb. You're like, oh, shit. You know, I really do appreciate of doing those three spots that night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I appreciated the fact that I could just walk with my family anywhere and I wouldn't be judged, I wouldn't be discriminated against, whatever. It just be like, there goes Joe and his family, not just like, do you have a mask or not? Right. You know? But yeah. I do believe that it took a pandemic for people to really realize what the most important things in life are. I think so, for sure. I think at the beginning, people were nicer. Because they were scared and they were like, it was almost like post 9-11 feeling. Right. Like, we're all in this together. Right. That didn't last very long. It, it was unrealistic to think that everybody's going to be that way. People don't get frustrated. Once also resources started getting low and people started realizing that they're not going to be able to work for a long fucking time. Right. Did you see the, the governor got busted? Did you see the photos? Which governor? Governor of California. He got busted for what? Got busted going to a restaurant with 12 people, no social distancing, no masks. All the shit that he's been preaching for, he didn't do. They were saying that he was in outdoors, like right. his his people said it was outdoors, but now they have photos of it, 100% indoors. Right. They're all indoors, but the talking, thing is, sitting. The, the unrealistic part about that, you know people got to push their platform. This match has, has been crazy. But me, I know it shouldn't be like this, and I know it's like, but what does it- she curls up in you. But what does She's it represent? So adorable. When I see motherfuckers <clears throat> like that, in a situation that no mask, not social distancing, I just assume that they all been tested and they all have been in a bubble situation. Well, that's, that's because you've think. been in a bunch of bubble situations. Like right. when wait, Dave did his shows down in Yellow Springs. Like you, guys you, all you bubbled tested. me first. I bubble you here. You're the first yeah. person. You're the first person. You didn't rape my nose. You raped, raped my finger. I didn't do it. Yes, you did. You hired a nurse. You made somebody do it. <laughs> you could call it whatever the fuck you want to do, but she worked for you. That's true. And you forced that. That she had to do it. Well, I just suggested it'd probably be a good idea for everybody. Yeah, but they, but it was good for everybody, and you yeah. knew that, so we know like that's a bubble world. Yeah, but it's not surprising that you see the governor in a situation like that because I'm pretty sure it doesn't send out the right message, but I'm pretty sure that the motherfuckers was tested. Well, that's what he should have said. They can't say that because they're a politician, and everybody would go, "Wait a minute, if I just test people, can I go to work?" Like what Dave's doing with all his shows. Yeah. Test people in the audience and you can have a full audience. You can you know you have a bunch of people that are healthy. You know you you you're taking the measures to create that safety. Yes. It's a bubble. Here's the thing that a lot of people understand is that like you could literally create your own bubble. Yes. Like I know people like well in certain states you have to meet a certain requirement to be tested. You can't be tested unless you have she starts showing symptoms. But you can create your bubble. There's testing almost everywhere. There's an opportunity for people to get tested. It's a little harder than that for most people because but most people rapid mean state for state. Most people, in terms of like just people's of just your access to it, it's not that common where you can go to a place and get a quick test yet. Okay, so then what's the difference? And I may be wrong. I this may be my ignorance. Like California, like I know the situation, like at Dodger Stadium, 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the most part, anybody with, I guess, a California idea or whatever, they can get tested. You know, but hold on. You know that takes hours. You know, those people have to wait in line for hours. There was a line. To down, get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But near, what does that mean? It takes fucking, if you have a job, man. If you have a job and you're you're supposed to be at work at 9 a.m. and you, you get to the COVID thing at 7.30 and they tell you it's a two and a half hour line, that's what it is. That's the reality. And most of those aren't giving you the results immediately. Not immediately, but enough where you could, if you got those results to say, you get those results in 18 hours. Say you were going to plan a family function yeah, or something. you don't do shit like for 18 you could, hours. You could do, then, what I'm yeah. saying is like, when the bubble, the idea of the bubble first started, started with the NBA, you kind of contributed to that. Dave did it. Well, UFC but, did it first. Yeah, well, they did we it. did it and UFC did it first. But they always thought like, oh my God, you don't have to be a millionaire to create a safe bubble for you and your family, your friends, right? No, you can do it now easier than ever before. But the, the problem with the governor saying it is other people will like, well, let us make a bubble and go to work because that's what they should do. What they right. could do is what we're doing here. We're just lucky that podcasting is a, an essential business. I think she's trying to jump down. She's not trying to kill herself. Jump no, down. I mean, she's just looking over the edge. Right. It's, no, she's my emotional dog. So. I understand. All right. <laughs> Listen, if anybody going to jump, it's going to be me. <laughs> I'm in tune with her. Okay. <clears throat> she's the most adorable little dog I've ever seen. Yeah. I've never seen a little dog as a puppy. Maggie Rivers, she's five months old. She knows her biological dad, and I'm her new dad. <laughs> It was important for me to, for her to know her biological dad because I didn't want her to come from a place with like mental issues and shit. But I understand. She's in tune with her mother. She knows her two her brothers and sisters. They have play dates. She's a but little But she cutie. knows she's my my little bitch right now. What kind of dog is she? A Chihuahua pit bull. Uh, no, she's part pit bull. That dog don't look like it's part pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pit bull fucked a Chihuahua? A toy pit bull. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, oh, one of the little ones. She's toy Chihuahua a toy. Toy. Those toy pit bulls are cute little dogs. Yeah, she's ferocious. Don't let that fucking sad eyes fool you. Have you ever seen a, a toy pit bull, Jamie? I don't think so. They're really tiny. We know real pit bulls, like the fighting pit bulls, they were like 30 pounds. They weren't big dogs. The ones that they bred for fighting. The smaller ones are the little, little demons. I don't even know if I can remember ever seeing a small pit bull. Yeah. Brian Callen used to have a small pit bull. It was a tiny one, and it was ferocious. That's where he gets his personality from. It's not him. It's no, his, he bought it's it. Animals. We went to a guy who raised them for fighting. Oh, shit. Yeah. We were, like, in our 20s. Those are all mostly puppies, but... Oh, my God. Look how tiny. Yeah. Damn, that little ball. motherfucker looked tough as shit. The black one. <laughs> look at his the face. The Black Lives Matter one, son. <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> Oh my god, that's ridiculous. That dog's ridiculous. That dog's See, that's time. the thing that they do. They they take these dogs and they but they, they break turn their legs these... and shit like that, right? Well, no, they just breed them. They they do what's called uh, like uh, they they select, right? So like a dog with shorter legs, they'll breed with another dog with shorter legs, and they'll try to select for certain right. traits. Like I used to have a dog that was from Hawaii, and they used him for hog hunting. That's what they use his family for. So he had long ears. It was a dog he, he was specific a to Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 breed a lot of pit bulls in Hawaii. For and what hog are their hunting. jobs? Because most dogs have. Do they go get birds? What the fuck does it? Do? Hog hunting. Okay. See, so what they do is in the real thick brush, you can't really get to the hogs. Like it's hard to shoot them even with a gun. Like you're shooting through hundreds of yards of brush. But right. the dogs can go in there and get them, and they'll hold them. They'll hold the pig. So there's a style of that pig makes hunting. the hunting easy though, right? It does, except for the dog. It's not like the same kind of hunting because you're right. relying 100% on the dogs. Usually there's two groups of dogs, depending on what animal you do. Like if they, they hunt mountain lions, they use, they use a certain kind of dog that'll bay the dog, right. that'll bay the mountain lion. And, but if they hunt pigs, a lot of times they'll use an animal that lets you know where the pig is, and then they release other animals that hold the pig. So those are the, those are the pit bulls. And then you shoot them. Well, they usually stab them. Hand... Like mm -hmm. up, yeah, it's kind of fucked. Oh, because so that experience is all about the dog. <clears throat> it's the dog is the one who did it, and you just finished the job. Damn, it's crazy too. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's there's videos of it of the way they do it, and it's like woof. And I've been asked to go on one of those hunts. I'm like, I am not interested in doing that. I what get they do, it. What, what happens when the dog gets old? Do they like they get new dogs? But this is a this is a thing that people are doing for two reasons. One for food. Right, because this is the best way that they can get food. Like you can trap this animal, and then th this, that's how you're going to get the animal. If you just rely on just hunting with like a rifle or a bow and arrow and real thick shit with wild pigs, you're probably going to go hungry. Right. So 
so there's that. And then the other thing is these are invasive animals. Like they, they were brought over to Hawaii and they're wild and they have no predators. So they have to kill them. They have to control their So population. did they bring them over here to kill a, a species or something? Like I know that. No, no. They brought them over for food. Oh, okay. Like Captain Cook and those dudes used to do that shit. They used to release goats on I don't on know Captain islands. Cook. I, only ca I know Captain Crunch. I know Captain Crunch as well. Yeah, that's the, I don't know Captain Delicious Crunch. Delicious stuff. Yeah. Um, Captain Hook was uh, an old pirate, right? Wasn't he? Cook. Cook. Did it say Hook? Yeah. Hook was a pirate too. too. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a Disney pirate. Shit. Yeah. Captain Cook, uh, he used to go to islands and they would drop off animals so that the next time they came around, they'd have something to eat. That's so they, smart. Yeah, so they'd leave goats on an island. I think that's how the goats got on Galapagos. I think that's how they got on a lot of islands. The, these pirates or sailors would drop these animals off. But meanwhile, these animals would destroy ecosystems. Yeah, but you had some fresh goat when you, you came back. Yeah, some fresh goat. Yeah, fuck the rivers. They and had shit. a lot of turtles too. They they killed off a lot of sea turtles because they would take sea turtles and they would flip them over and put them on their back and they'd be good for weeks. And they, like would they eat didn't. It. Yep, they would eat them because you don't you don't need any. They don't need anything. Like they can survive just on their back for weeks and weeks and weeks. And you don't have to worry about refrigeration or them. You yeah, know. but you can't tell somebody you're hunting turtles. You're not trying to do That's, it for sport. They slow as a motherfucker. If you're like, I fucking stalked this fucking, I followed this turtle for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, they probably get them on the beach. But if you got them in the water, they'd be quick. Sea turtles? Like when I was growing up, we catch a motherfucking uh, turtle on the road. And it was always one country motherfucker. Like this, He usually was a mechanic in the neighborhood. And he had like oil up under his hand. He always helped people's baby mothers with fucking changing their brake pads and shit. <laughs> Just one of those grimy, <laughs> dirty motherfuckers <laughs> that eat any type of roadkill. And whenever we saw fucking a dead, dead turtle or something, we knew that nigga was going to be yelling out, turtle soup. Yeah, people That's like turtle did. soup. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, but. I've never had it. Yeah, it seems like it would probably be an alligator, meaty, meaty type of family. Alligator tastes good. It is. Yeah. Everything tastes good when it tastes like chicken. That's the reference for anything. It tastes like chicken. Yeah. I had frog legs recently. They were good. You, it's. I've had frog legs before, but trying to convince a black person to eat frog legs is a tough sale. To That's tall all, order? Yeah. To, for, to get a black person <laughs> to order frog legs off of a menu is like getting them to say, I want my steak uh, rare. It's always got to be well done. You eat well done? No, that's what I'm saying. I don't. Oh. But how do you eat your steak? Medium. Medium? Yep. Not medium rare? I don't, there's a lot of black people to watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, I'm going to tell you when he changed. <clears throat> when they start talking about blood. Medium rare. Yeah, when they was like, when they start talking about blood, that's when he lost the streets. So. That I could do medium, medium rare. I can't do it. I would. I understand. I've had it like <clears> that, but my preference would be medium. Yeah. But dude, average, you know, circle that I grew up around. My jujitsu instructor eats it well done, and when he orders it, I cringe like oh, John you know, Jacques Machado. Well done. I go. Whoa. You know what that feeling is? For the sh imagine a chef that gets the order and says, two well done steaks at table forty nine. They're calling them every fucking racial thing that they can think of. <laughs> That's the quickest way to fucking fit, make somebody order a fucking well done steak. And Chefs see how they, did not enjoy it. They not at all. They don't like cooking it like that. That's I'm, a weird thing, like a preference thing. Like if you ask people's preference, like it's not like you just cook it. Like if you order chicken, they just cook your chicken. They right. don't ask you what temperature you'd like your chicken breast. But they, they just know. Cook it. Yeah, well, they just cook it. Right. But even pork chops, same thing, right? Yeah. They don't ask you. But with steak, they'll give you options. Well, why the fuck are you giving me an option if I can't have well done? You should just have it your way, but it's just insulting. It is, but it's, it's insulting. Like they give the opportunity to insult because they do have that as an option. Have you ever been uh, a certain way, like judge somebody by the way they, they order eat. their steak? Yeah, I do, honestly. But but again, John Jock Machado, like I said, um, I have nothing but respect for him. It makes me sad that he likes well done meat. <laughs> I know this is going to be bad. People were like, what type of brother am I? But I took my sister out to eat once. She ordered a steak, and she ordered it well done. I said, I think you should order something else. I said, I'm not paying for a leather belt. Wow. And I didn't even have to eat the shit. I wasn't going to do it. I just felt fucked up. You felt judgy. I didn't feel I was judgy. A little judgy. 
Yep, I was like, let that fucking hood shit go. Is it? But isn't that the only food that we have that with? Like cheeseburgers, nobody gives a fuck. If somebody says, "How do you want your cheeseburger?" You're like, well, in the black medium, community, well done. In the black community, when you say cheeseburger, for the most part, that's going to be well done. Yeah, it's black people don't want to see the pink in it. That's right. the, they want. They'll tell you all the pink out. Well, you really should with ground beef. See, the thing with ground beef is. You don't know what the surface area is. When you're eating ground beef, right, they take a, a, a cow's whatever and they grind it up. The stuff in the middle, like, that could have been on the outside, right? So you don't know, like, when you get a steak, you sear the outside, you cook the outside. The, there's no room for bacteria. Anything that could have grown on the outside is dead. And the inside you don't have to worry about unless it's rotten. That's why black people get their fucking hamburgers well done, well, Joe. Well, that's, that's wise. I'm yeah. saying, I'm we didn't know it, but that's just what it was yeah. for a hamburger. Right. Yeah. You don't want to get food poisoning. Right. Yeah, hamburgers, unless you are right there when they grind it or you go to a top shelf restaurant where they literally, they'll take a piece of chuck roast and they'll gr or even filet right. mignon. Like some of them do it with like a, a If you get a cut. burger that's ground out of filet mignon, you're in the right neighborhood. You're in the right neighborhood. Yeah. They usually add fat to it, believe it or not. To make it juicier. Yeah, to make it juicier. What is it with white people with blood, though? I don't know. I mean, like, like, I know this is but white people get a kick out of, like, the rarest they can order a steak. Like, the blood part of it, like, no. yeah. You, Nobody, what? Rare is weird. When somebody orders rare, or you know what blue but is? But you, you proud of the blood, Joe. No. Every time you post an elk picture, it's like you, you can't <laughs> just show the meat. You want motherfuckers to see the knife, mm -mm. and you do your picture, Joe, and it's, it's like you waited for the blood to sweat at a certain temperature. You know when it looks the bloodiest, and that's the but shot you always get. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is show that it's cooked perfectly, that it's medium rare with respect for the meat. When I do it, I use a thermometer. I mean, I do it nice and slow, oh God, and I know man. you know how to cook. Don't get wait crazy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't wait get a crazy. Minute. Wait a minute, Just Joe. trying to explain something. Wait a minute, Joe. What? You're a man of wilderness. Yes. Right? And all that. You're well respected, right. right? Look at that, though. Yeah, look at that. Look Joe, that. look it's at that. Perfect. It's perfect. Look at that. That's perfect. You can't, it doesn't get better than that. But you're proud of the color of it. Because it's perfect. It's perfectly cooked. But it looks, it's like, ah, what is it? That's elk. That's elk. That's super athlete. I argued with someone because I told them that you like elk and I can make elk. And they were like this. I'm sure you, you can't can make, make it. it. But they were like Tom this. Papa makes it. The last time I spoke to you about uh, me cooking, you were very condescending. That's not true. Yes, you were. You were making no, fun I, of me. No, I said it the same way I said you got shot. No, okay. I said you can cook. Yeah, and you're That's right. That's not condescending. It is, but the way with that, the way you looked at me, you looked me up and down. You judged me, and then you <laughs> said it. That's the difference, Joe. That's the difference. When I said I could cook. Elk. Let you me just hear what like, I've heard. The Let me tell you what I've heard. I heard you cook really well. Okay. I heard you have amazing barbecue skills. That could be quite borderline a, quite racist. Quite a few people. That could be borderline <laughs> racist. That could be borderline. Isn't That's that like your you, shit? What is yeah, your but shit? You said barbecue. You like, Listen, barbecue is one of the most complex forms of cooking. I know, but you, you gotta be when I real barbecue, careful. I you're doing it slow. Too much, you fuck it up. Too little, you don't do it right, and then you, it's hard to put it back on because it hasn't been sitting at the same temperature the entire time. That's the art. Of barbecue, yes. but when I hear barbecue, I think about the barbecue. I understand, like the black barbecue. I understand, with like the Frankie Beverly and the whole right. thing. It's a whole production, not just one right. piece of barbecue. That's what the I was barbecue saying. Barbecue in Texas is mostly white people, I think. And I, yo, as far I will as say my this, own personal experiences, I will say this: white people can fucking smoke some meat. They know how to do it here. I'll tell you that. They, when I first got it, I think it's a place called Blacks. I don't know if you found the favorite. Terry whatever. Blacks, phenomenal. Yeah. Didn't that that franchise? Ooh. Didn't they break up? Like. Yes. They broke up. One they used to be with the family. Then the, the sons started on their own. They That's started the, beefing the place with each other, literally. Yeah, they had some issues. I don't want to get, air their dirty laundry on the podcast. Right. But uh, the sons Somebody stole opened the barbecue up a spot. Secret Something sauce. happened. <laughs> Something happened. Somebody gave up the secret sauce. These play, the people, Terry Black's in town has only been open since 2014, I believe. And it, it feels like a place that's been around 100 years. I mean, they got it dialed in. That barbecue's off the hook. Think it's about it. So they have to have good. it dialed in if if they came up generations and generations. Yeah. They're just putting whatever the recipe is, whatever the love Donnell, is. No, they make their own they make their own smokers. They use giant propane tanks and they make their own smokers. Oh uh, maybe that's what I enjoy. Next level. Yeah. White people level of barbecuing when they start doing the machines and I should say they witches. hire someone to make their smokers. 
but they get this dude to make these smokers out of propane tanks. They're not buying like a big commercial smoker. They're having this commercial smoker made. We they gave That's us a tour. That's cheating the game, bro. They did an amazing job. They wanted it to their specifications, and those those uh, propane tanks are thick as fuck. It's heavy fuck gauge that, man. steel. Man, where's the wood? Well, you cook with wood. Okay. The wood is an offset. You know how those smokers work, right? right. So you have an off a firebox. The right. firebox is over on the side, and they're constantly checking the temperature and opening the flues, make sure it's at a perfect temperature, and then. You got the smoker, which is off to the side, and they're moving meat around because it's hotter where the air comes right out, but oh, so they got they're really system. well in. Oh, my God. They got it dialed in. Their brisket is ridiculous. It's so good. That's the what I'm talking about, oh. bro. That shit milks your mouth, and, it's, and their brisket oh. don't come off bloody like that. It's a different kind of animal. That's, that's, that's elk. I mean, you could have elk, and you could do it that way. They cook the neck meat that way. My friend John Dudley. We're neck, in, elk ne yeah, neck meat? Yeah, neck meat. Because the neck meat is very strong and dense. Because elk has giant antlers, right? So right. El elk's carry it's like it's doing weights with its But neck. an elk doesn't have no fatty. It's no fatty No cut. fat. No fat. No fat. There's a little bit of fat on the outside of them, but there's no fat in the meat at all. It's a totally different thing. So you got to cook it slow. So if it's anything other than that, like mm -hmm. medium rare like that, it's going to be dried out. Right. You want it just cooked slowly and seared on the outside. So like I take a totally different approach if I'm cooking like a ribeye from a, a cow versus an elk steak. Completely different way of cooking. I know that because you never post regular steak pictures. It's like... I'm, I, I eat regular no, steak. No, you don't. You don't I never... Do. You fucking... Once you did your fucking first elk, <laughs> your regular steak pictures was just dead, man. Well, they're not as interesting to me. Regular steak is great. I'll cook it. I'll eat it. But the elk is like, I have an intimate relationship with that. Everyone knows that. Of course they do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> even when I tell people I'm going to do your show, they're like, take a bite of the elk from me. <laughs> I'm serious, man. It's like, yo, you done some cool shit. They seen you do a lot of cool shit, but they never seen you. And you told me, do I really want elk? And I was like, yeah, but... Um, it, I had I was in the hospital recovering from an injury, so I couldn't yeah. get here the way I wanted to. That's a a, a lucky injury in the sense, right? Like I mean, all the things that could have gone wrong with your thumb, that not even need surgery, right? Able to get the bullet fragments out. I mean, that's that's how I run my life, man. I try to make it easy as possible. Anybody <laughs> else could have fucking had this injury <laughs> and been fucked up. If the pandemic can't stop me, neither can this fucking thumb, man. Yeah. How does it feel? I know it's a crazy question. You get it all the time from being from a place. Like you were saying, like what we took advantage of, yeah. and one of the things we never took advantage of stage time because we always did it, but not having it accessible to you all the time. How does it feel here with not being able, to be like you know what? I'm gonna ready to go do like fucking three spots and hammer some shit out real quick. Well, the, I haven't done that since March. You know, since uh, the store closed down, there was no comedy at all in LA. So it was right. It was a whole life shift. Um, the only time I did it on the road was July, and in July I did four shows at the Houston Improv. I had a great fucking time. I just left there, man. Great place. It was. Did you feel? I know this sounds crazy. I know we're gonna get to some mask shit, mask shit story, whatever. Yeah. But it's a club that had a certain capacity. Now they got to trim it down to mm -hmm. meet whatever the mandate or the yeah. rules are. But people were in there. Temperature check. They were in there. And yeah. I know this sounds crazy. Some people. We're masks. Some people didn't have masks. And I right. think, if I'm not mistaken, they sell the tickets as a group, right? I don't know if they're doing that now, but they're doing that at a lot of places. And it's like, you feel good about it. Yeah. You know, but then it's like, people take away from that feeling because it's always somebody like, ah, where's the mask? Where's the mask? Right. There are, there are people that are rightly upset at people taking risks because those people that do take risks could then get sick. And if they're irresponsible enough to take a risk and get sick, they might be irresponsible enough to go out and mingle with people when they know they're sick. But Some then, people are like that. Some people are selfish. You know that, right? I know that. Yeah. So Then that's what you it, have to be... And then they could even give it out when they don't know they have it. They but could you, be asymptomatic. But then at some point... Don't you have to be selective about the people that you engage yes. with? Don't you have to be selective on the chances? This is my frustration. I'm not a mask or a non-masker. Like people make the argument, but what if I'm in the? What if I go to the grocery store and I have my mask on and there's this old lady that doesn't have her mask on? Then I don't think you should go places where it could be people that 
Just, don't have their mask on. Shouldn't you order online or something? Just don't get in that lady's face, and you're going to be fine. It's it's Man. I don't think you should tell some old lady that she has to put a mask on. I ran into an old lady at the grocery store. She didn't have a mask on. And right. I was like, all right. What, what are you going to do? She's old, man. I mean, this lady, she probably feels terrible breathing through the mask. She anyway, probably feels like she doesn't have much time. She's about to have an asthma attack. She had one on, but she was doing this shit. The I got into shit. an argument. Up, yo. That chin they shit that yelled, people are get, doing? They get, I get yelled at. I went to a grocery store. I'm getting a couple of items. And I had my motherfucking mask. And, Joe, when I tell you, the tip of my nose was showing. The tip right people here. got mad. And this lady was behind plexiglass. She had sanitizer. She was squirting the register down every minute. She had a mask, everything. And my shit went right to the tip of my nose. She was like, sir, 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 sir. You got to put your mask on. You got to put your mask on. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Now I got to pay. I do Apple Pay. But to get into my phone. You got to open up the phone. With my face. Yeah. So I put it down. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm trying to pay. I got to log in my face. She was like, well, you can't do that in here. Right? You can't use Apple Pay? I can't show my face to open my phone up. You got to use get... Samsung Pay. They let you use your fingerprint. Time to switch to Android. I don't have an Android. <laughs> I don't have it. That's very evil for you to enter I have an another. Android. I know, but I wouldn't talk about your fucking phone, Joe. Why is it evil? Because it was the wrong time. <laughs> it was the fucking wrong time. <laughs> And the thing I was making, so I had to. How'd you guys? you This is a sorry. This is what I had to do, Joe. I had to actually stand, leave the register, go to where I could do, outside. Yeah. Show my face, open my phone up, and I went to pay. And then when that happened, I could have been pissed, but I could have been like, you know what? I'm just never gonna go to that store again. Well, it's just a lady working. We're just. Put the mask over your nose. I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I can get frustrated. I did it. I it was just for us. Is there any. Just for app Apple Pay. Well, you were already arguing with her, right? Is that part of the problem? I never said I was arguing. So She was already telling you to put your mask over your nose. So she was in a heightened state of awareness. Of frustration. Yeah, but she with also. You. I don't know if it was me. But you know what? It was me. I didn't see that energy around anybody else. Perfect time to use the black card. I'm not going to do it. It's the, it's the nose no, card. It's she, a, she saw your nose, and she's... Some people are just, like, real sticklers for shit. You know Bridget Phetasy? Do you no, know who's that? Comic from L.A., writer. She told me she was walking on one side of the street, and there was a guy across the street on the sidewalk on the other side yelled at her, Put a mask on! Let me tell you something. This argument, I know it's for safety and everything. I know it's for safety and what the lies we share and all that. But for some people, it's a perfect opportunity to be an asshole. Exactly. It's like, and that's the like the fine line. Is like, do you really care about this mask, or you get to either? It's discrimination against mass people, and no, no mass people. It's just people have an opportunity to tell people what to do. They get mad. They do. Yeah, they love and then it. Then you want to hear to it. Then they get mad because you're not listening to the rules. Fuck it. Right. Well, that's why people are particularly upset at this Gavin Newsom shit. He's because been he's been the one telling us you can't have large gatherings for Thanksgiving. Stay home, social distance, wear a mask in between bites of food. Right. This guy's been saying all this shit. And then he's doing. And now you different. go see him eating at a restaurant. So does that mean that we believe everything's about you got? So that's a perfect example of, you know, a lot of things are uh, motivated through politics and looks. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you see, not what is not really, what you think it is. So how much, uh, how much? Are you going to put into a person? Like, what well, their politician? thoughts are? Yeah. <sighs> Not much. You, what kind of person wants to do that? That's the problem. What kind of person wants to be a governor? It's, they're not normal. And you, you didn't care until the pandemic. When the pandemic rolled around, you realized, oh, the mayor matters. It really matters who your you mayor is. You know what? I is. think a lot of them, like, like, have dreams of a certain amount of fame and want to be superstars. Yeah. Because even though you say you do it for the people... You have to be likable or have some type of personality to sure. connect with those people. And you're cultivating you know? your act. They have an act, too. 100%. They have an act that's different than our act. Our act is to make people laugh. Their act is to get people to think that they're the person who's got the solution. There's our leader. There's so our their leader. act is to, is to lie. Yes. 100%. Man, Dave, you know what, Joe? We're going through, through all of this shit. And even with this last election, whoever you decided you liked, appreciate, whatever. It was just a weird thing going on. It was a weird thing going on. And I was watching one of David Goggins' posts. And I have to say, David Goggins, 
I've never seen nobody have worse feet than my feet. Oh, his feet are broken down. But he, but runs, his, he just got done running 240 miles. I know you was going to defend that, and I was going <laughs> to say the same thing, Joe. I know you were going to say, but what has he done with your, his feet, and what have you done with you? <laughs> So it, I know you were going to be like, you know how many mountains? Those are fucking rock blisters. Yeah, legitimate. I know you was going to say that, and that's the point I was going to make it. That's the point I was going to make. He said, everybody there they are. A, yeah. Jesus Christ, look at those big toes. Yeah, those look like crate, like they've been through it. That is hilarious. Those that thing on the left, you showed me that. If you cut out like the, Ouch! the, the right foot's big toe. Damn. That son. right foot's big toe. If you showed me a photo of that and didn't show me the rest of his foot, I'd be like, uh, that's like a snail or something. People would say if you did that, people would say that was my foot. That's a Mars a Mars rock. But like you said, <laughs> like, Give me, just zoom, zoom in on just the toe. Don't show me anything but his right toe. That's a rock from Mars. That's, 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 that's not real. But that's fucking a lot of miles, Joe. That's a brain of steel. That man has a brain of steel. That's a lot. He, he knows how to force himself to do shit that hurts. Yeah, this is what he was saying. He said, And then whatever it is, he one thing about him, he always has to remind you that he was a fat piece of shit. Yep. It doesn't like yep. that's got to be fat. Must be the number one motivating thing for Look him. Look at that toe. God damn. So son. if you you didn't see the rest of it, you'd be like, "What is that? Oh, that's a rock somewhere. That's on an, another planet. That's a satellite oh, nigga, photo. Don't go that close, <laughs> that's Come a on, satellite man. photo. See white people, y'all gross as shit. Son. That's a satellite. You photo. You want to see blood and pus come out of that <laughs> motherfucker? I know your thing, like Jamie. Go closer. But the point he made, son. He said. He said. Everybody, I I used to be a fat piece of shit. Yeah, he was 300 right? pounds. Yeah, I was 300 when I was a piece of shit. Everybody's looking for, I need the answer with this person. I need the answer with that person. But fuck it, why don't you be the answer for yourself? Yeah. That's, that's I know people are like, well, that's easy to say. But why not find the answers you need in life through yourself? Right. And through what you do, your hard work. And the a, in a, in a type of person and type of human and type of father you are. That's why people like him are so important because he'll tell like what? you. Yeah. People like him are so important because he'll tell you he used to have no discipline. Right. So, like, look at him now. This. this is not something he was really born quick, with. Really quick, I got to inter interrupt. Go it's so funny you said discipline because I was having coffee with Dave today. And then he said that about you because I was talking about uh, I can't drink no shit with my antibiotics when I got shot and everything. And then some kind of way we talked about you. And then, and and that's what he said. He said, "I fucking love and respect his discipline." I do have some of that. Yeah, you but got, I'm lazy too, man. I force myself in all the stuff that I do. Yeah, but if you get challenged by something, though, yeah. something kicks you in the ass. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't like falling. I don't like not doing what I'm supposed to do. So I force myself to do what I'm supposed to do. But it's never easy. It's not easy. You know. It's like I, I always would think of disciplined people as being. Like, uh, there was no wavering. They just got up and did it. But you know, that's the other thing Goggins tells you. He goes, sometimes I'll stare at my shoes for 30 motherfucking minutes before I put them bitches on. <laughs> yeah, because you want to get rid of, look at them ugly ass feet, son. <laughs> God damn, son. God damn. Hey, son, that's I not what he's so, talking about, though. He's talking about time, discipline. Joe. I know this worst time, Joe. But, I did a pivot. I just, I opened up my own store, right? And after I just saw David Goggins' feet, you got to help me get that. Look at that shit, well, I son. I know we, we sold candles a lot. No, time. son. You, you don't here? know about that Friday right ashiness. there. Yo, yeah. son. That is, Joe, put a little on your good. hand. Please put a little good. on your hand. It smells good. That shit is vegan. It's all natural. It's mm. fire, son. Mm. That's what you can, watch what I say, son. Mm. Watch what I say. Nice. Watch how long that shit lasts, Joe. Okay. Feels good. I know it sounds weird. Look at that shit, Smells son. good. It's, it does it's the smell shit, good. son. Raw edge. The What's ingredients are all on the back. I know you don't got your glass. You don't have to read it. But it's like type of oils and coconuts I never heard of it in my life. It smells like coconut. Coconut, a Google, all the oh, black got nuts CBD. and oils. CBD, son. You feel me? I don't know what this stuff is. When I... Mongongo oil? What is yeah, that? Google it. Google it. Google it. Google and it. mad rich plant butters. <laughs> Good. Mad... Yo, you laughing, son? You're <laughs> laughing, but that shit is fire, it's son. I, I'm just laughing at the Erica Badu it. put that shit on, right? I love it. Erica Badu put that shit on. Nah, that's you, son. Oh, thank you. Listen, every... Erica Badu put that on, son? And she started rubbing herself real, real slow. She hadn't been out in the big pandemic in a while. And she was like, mm. She was like, is it edible? Wow. How she high was she? Know. Was she really high? 
Are you disrespecting my product? Or you no, disrespecting but if I was system? thinking about taking cream and eating it, I'd probably have to be pretty high. Um, certain people react to things differently, Joe. But it does smell like food, though. It but, smells like a delicious but wait to it. But wait to it. It's like, it's like food. There it is. It's like food for your your, your body is eating right now, Joe. Mm -hmm. And 100, 100 uh, milligrams of CBD. Yep. Look at that. Mongogo oil. There it is right there. there. CBD is. and hemp it's seed oil. Cocoa butter. We got mm, all the nuts. Look at this. When did you start this business? How long I ago? I started it. I've been working on the formula for two years. Scroll so. down. Look at that. <laughs> I know that's my. Best Why does it say ever. too classy? Because oh, that's the feeling. From ashy to classy. I, that's the feeling. That's okay. the feeling you have. Look at that. I like the sparkle. The thing sparkle about it, Joe. Teeth? I've been ashy my <laughs> life, whole life, right? You know that everybody yes. know it. <clears throat> and for years, people are like you should do lotion. You should do lotion. I'm like, man, it's it's kind of corny. I mean, it could be a the, the novelty. Be could be funny. Yo, Ashy Larry got his own lotion, and I was like, fuck that shit. Then I met with this young lady. And she's like a chemist when it comes to this lotion shit. And we started working on it. And then when I when I finally tried what was the end product, I was like, this shit really work. Like, it really works and it's good. It sounds like it's good for your muscles, too, if it's got CBD It's good in for it. everything. Your hands are going to thank me later, son. I believe it. Yes. What is the name of the website? James. Donnell Rollins. That's yeah, where you can get it. Oh, Donnell Rollins. Okay. Yeah. I oh, opened up a website. store, son. Oh, I like it. I like it. Look at you. Entrepreneurial. I, did, I never... This is one thing that came out of this, and not just for me, Joe, for a lot of people. Think about this. A person that makes their money on the road, a mm -hmm. road, a real road comic. This happened to me. 95% of the money that I make is on the road. 95% <clears throat> of the shows I had are done. So the only thing I have from what I usually make is that 5%, and I didn't enough for shit. Right, and even though you can have some money stacked up or whatever, you still gotta you gotta ask yourself what the fuck is going to be the pivot. I don't think the pivot's going to come for a long time either, in terms of us being able to get back to work. Like no, we no, were. no, we about to go to work next summer. Next summer, you think, Joe? Donnell. Well, I'm not trying to say I don't believe in Corona right, right now, but we are on the track of not just deadening shit, but being able to have it under control. We're about to get to the point where people are going to. Uh, have more sense of security, you know what I'm saying? Just think about, think about the progress we made in a year from when this shit first happened. You take a corona test, you had to wait like seven days. Right. Think about it when we first when it first hit, we had to like, oh my god, it was so scary, so scary, and then all these ventilators, ventilators, ventilators. But if you know now, since when the pandemic started, yeah, we still losing people, but you don't hear that ventilator talk too much no more. Well, ventilators are actually a bad idea now. They realize my point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's they like, figured out a lot of finding things. This I, I did a whole podcast yesterday on COVID with right. uh, Nicholas Christakis yeah. from Yale. He a COVID nigga. He believes that COVID? COVID is a real problem. Yeah, for sure. You that don't? Was, I believe it, but I, I believe think it's it, controlled. A controllable. It is controllable. Um, I think there's a, it's a multifaceted problem, and I think we're only handling one aspect of it, which is keep people from working, keep people home, keep people away from people. No, you can't you, do you're that. You're treating people like they're children. You got this. Is what you got to do. You got to let them go outside. This is what you got to do. We're gonna have more creative ways to make money. Like, yeah. think about the comedy scene when we thought like the only place to tell jokes was on a stage, and I was I had some resentment toward some of those. Outdoor events, the parking lot shit. First mm -hmm. time I saw one of those parking lot shows with horns, I was like, never give a heckler an instrument to fuck your show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's no way I'm going to, these motherfuckers don't like me. There's no way I'm going to be, heckler. Yeah, but people are happy to be out, man. It's a different experience. That's, and the, the, the point I was making is like, you, you, you could suppress people you can call them down for a certain period of time period of time but after a while you're gonna have to figure something out my point i was going to make is they're out. only looking at one side of it they're not looking at telling people how to be healthy there's no talk about that nigga yes nigga that's what's up right son you a strong motherfucker all your niggas is strong jamie might be the least strong out of everybody Whoa, excuse me stop no, i'm just dings. saying like Shut jamie your phone's i know ding off man jamie i'm not saying you're not strong son <laughs> I'm not that's saying. What you just said, yeah, but you're comparing but him to like Tony like Hinchcliffe. I'm just saying. Yeah, or, or Red right, Band. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm I didn't forget about. No. Yeah, you. Oh, Listen, you, you, he's you, got a, a oh, yeah, deadly sorry, three Tony pointer. Tony Hinchcliffe. He's got a deadly three pointer, and he runs like Jamie's in shape. I do pull that's ups. black shape. He does pull ups. That's black people shape. He's in, he does pull ups. That's black people shape. Run, play basketball, yeah. and pull ups and push ups. <laughs> you do like the jail workouts, sir. Jamie's actually in good shape. 
I know. I believe it. I'm sorry, Jamie. I didn't mean to offend sorry, you. Man. I get it. Sorry. He's back there. He doesn't God talk a damn. lot. damn. I know. Then when he talks, okay. then when he finally <laughs> talks, it's like, yo, when he finally talks. Jamie, show him, like, some, show, him, show him that video of you dunking, uh, uh, shooting uh, three pointers. I never dunk. said he couldn't play basketball, <laughs> son. But, uh, dude, it's impressive. Like you Rain dunk, Man dunk, shit. Son? No, no. No, he can't dunk. We're working on that. He's hitting three pointer after three pointer like Rain Man. There's something weird about him. Well, um, like he's got like he, there might he might have a wire crossed in his brain. Uh, I didn't know you was nice. What I'm saying is, to go back to your point, Joe, is everybody's talking about the end of Corona, like Don Lemon, man, Don Lemon, man, ah, Don Lemon. So four years, son, for four years straight, he complained. He was mad at Donald Trump for four fucking years. Yeah, four years, and. I was like, man, if Donald Trump wins this election, Don Lemon is going to jump off the CNN building. Do you remember all their faces when he won last time? When he won in 2016? They were all so depressed. Jake yeah. Tapper and all those people on TV just like, motherfucker, I can't believe this. Yeah, but th here's the thing, Joe. I'm like... <sighs> I don't think you're supposed to do that if you're doing the news. If Joe, you're doing commentary, you can Joe, do that. I think if you're doing the news, you're supposed to say the news. Joe. Let us figure it out. Joe. Don Al. Joe. That's why I do subscribe to the notion that fake news, like to be honest, it's all fake. It's all of them are fake. It's, it's a lot all fake. fake. And this is what I did, what I keep on telling people is like, how, I know you're upset, but when you're like, you, you're, it's all personal, like everything hits you to the heart. Like, well, that's where it gets weird. Those two guys, Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon, both of them, they do this editorializing and this like it's it's sure. it's almost like they're doing a podcast. And their opinion is all in it. And their opinion's in it, but it's also scripted. It's on the other side too. But it's, it's scripted. On, yeah. And they're doing it on a news channel. There's a lot going on there. But that's why if you don't there here's another thing about the media. If you didn't understand whatever party you agree with, whatever that if you don't understand how easy it is to manipulate the media, Joe. It is so, so simple. To manipulate to, the media? To man, man, manipulate the media and the people to listen to it. Well, that's you, what it's To manipulate people. What, what do you mean by manipulate the media? Man, like, you can create stories. Okay. You can create stories. Yes. You can make things happen. Oh, I got okay. shot, nigga. Yes, I see. I got shot in my motherfucking thumb. That's what I heard. And a lot of people don't believe me. Well, I believe you. I don't believe that you believe me, Joe. <laughs> That's what I believe, motherfucker. <laughs> That's not convincing. But I the point you. I'm making is, like when I got when I first got shot, Joe, I posted on Instagram. I didn't want to post on Instagram because I know that I didn't want to get no war in the streets going on. People like going out looking for the person that shot me in my thumb. So I kept it to myself. It didn't really bring it to me people's attention. I posted one picture of me being in the hospital. Everybody's like, you okay? You okay? They don't know how what I got shot for, but they're just they instantly got connected to that story. Did you ever think of not posting it? I did. What made you decide to post it? The world needs to know. The world needs to know a little some bit. Of the gigs I had to postpone when I was oh, locked, okay. shot up, not locked up. When I, you know what I'm I saying? It's it. like yeah, I wasn't ready to share it to the world then. I didn't know how my friends was going to take it. Okay. Then I wanted to be transparent, to be honest, and let them know I got shot. That's what I did. You know. I see. You feel like. You still don't believe me. I do believe you. I think you're just looking for a very specific reaction from me. I gave that up a long time ago, bro. <laughs> I gave it up. I was like, whatever. That was what made me nervous the first time I came up. I'm like, what the fuck do I say? <laughs> say what you say, nigga. Don't try to. All uh, right, I'm here. You are here. But. Are you thinking about bailing out of L.A. yet? Um, I think so. Yeah, a lot of people are. The reason that we've started feeling... Um, when we don't, well, you don't really need Hollywood like that, you know. I don't think anybody needs it anymore. Some people thought they did. You're right. Some people thought they did. They thought yeah. it was like you had to be here every night. I thought I needed to be there for a long time. And then once what happened in this situation, then you realize, oh, what can I do? You're like, wait a minute. I really can make my own community. Yes. I can make my own community. Not only that, you get connected to all the other communities, like and all the other podcasts. We all help each other. We're all together. I will say one, one, one thing white people do when it comes to podcasts, they support each other. Yeah, we support each other. But you know what, man? That's a new thing. 
Because in radio, it was the opposite. When right. they had radio, they'd attack each other. Like, I remember Opie and Anthony was always at war with Howard Stern. And, you know, Jay Leno was always at war with uh, all the other late night talk show hosts. And But did you think that that made people engage? Do you think that made people engage with their platforms more? No, no, no. They, nope. were just, they were just scared. Because they only had a... Like, back in the day when you were on television or the radio, you had a very specific time slot. You had 6 a.m. Day parts. To 10 a.m., right? Day parts. And other people are also... On at 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and no one's recording anything, so you have to listen to it live. That's I was a the same part of that. television. I was a part of that. I don't know if you. I was a part of when Hot 97 was the biggest in urban radio in New York. It was the biggest, and then I, I was I was doing radio when Power 105 came and became a competitor. They had no competition at first. You know, it was just yeah. them. Then they got challenged, and that what that's what made for interesting, interesting shit between both of them. Is like, yeah, we talk shit about. 97.1, 97.5, then 105. Then you start listening to both of them to see what shit they're talking. You could do that if you're them, or you could listen, and if you like it, tell people it's good. That's what podcasters do. Like, if I'm listening to your show, I'll tell people, Tonnell Rollins' show is hilarious, or listen to this guy, or listen to her, or listen to... What I'll tell people, people I don't even fucking know, man. I tell right. people about podcasts that I listen to from NPR or uh, fucking Radio Lab. What I, I always tell people because I'm interested in cool shit. I want to know about cool shit, and if I find cool shit, I want to tell other people about cool shit. And I'm people not don't worried. Think that that's cool. Enough. Well, they they're worried about if they talk about something else, it's gonna, it's gonna take opinions. It's gonna take attention away from them. That's what's called famine thinking. You can never famine? think that. Famine. 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 Feast or famine. I'm right. a feast thinker. Right. I always think there's enough for everybody. Everybody come too. aboard. I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to make money. I want everybody to be famous. I want everybody to be happy. I want them to be fulfilled. I don't want to be the man. I, that, that idea of being the man is, to me, is ridiculous. I that's think, your idea, but on the outside of when you do stuff like that, for some people and their perception of you, that's what makes... You the man. That's what makes you, if you're able to inspire and motivate, that's what makes you the man that, you know, you say you're not. Well, I'm happy that, that if that's the case that people think that way, but I'm, they just, know it. I'm in a position to be generous, so they I'm know generous. It. They I'd even like hold it generous. against you, too. It feels good to be generous. But they, they hold, hold it against it against me. Who yeah. holds it against me? People that don't like me. They hold it against you that I have that I have you on? No, people that don't like me, they'll say They hold so. it against me because yeah, you. That, like you. Oh, because like the RZA podcast? Jamie? <laughs> Jamie, is that what he's talking about? No. They, <laughs> what are you talking about? They, no, they'll people tell me. don't like you don't know you. Yeah, but like some people, they told me they wasn't going to like you anymore because you liked me. Good luck. If that's how they crazy you, you are. They but, said they wasn't going to like you because you didn't. But that's ridiculous. Anybody who thinks like that is out of their fucking mind. They was like, Norm, they were saying shit like this, and I don't read the comments, Joe. They were saying shit like this. <laughs> they were shit like, well, Joe was right up to this point. <laughs> Yo, they like you had a track record. Like, yeah, I believed everything said until he got loud mouth up there. Here's the thing: I don't think anybody will ever understand the camaraderie that we all have, right. that comics have. Yep. It's a different world. But the podcast world is totally different. Y'all motherfuckers, yes. yo, y'all motherfuckers. It's just like, but man, the podcast world is so fucking dope. And the podcast world was ready for the pandemic. Yeah, the podcast people is like this. What pandemic? I get to spend more time with my kids. I get to yeah. spend more time with my kids, and you get to spend more time doing podcasts because everybody's free. Yep. Even if you have to do those stupid Zoom podcasts, you're still spending more time doing podcasts. Yeah, but it's like you figured out. Like they knew it was going to happen before it fucking happened. I came in right at well. I think I came in right at the right time. I don't think they knew it was going to happen before it happened, but I think they got lucky. They got lucky that they were... Look, man, back when I was uh, just dependent upon Hollywood and gigs, I'd be fucked right now. I'd, I'd have no income coming in. But you I, saw I'm the future, to too, you son. You talk, I, I said this to you before. Like, when you hear, like, Joe Rogan, you hear about this Spotify deal, and you hear about all this type of shit, blah, 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 blah. And then you... what? You don't understand. Like I said, Joe, everybody wants to be you right now, but nobody... Wants to be you when people were saying no and equipment was breaking down and we didn't know if we was going to do it. See, we, the you know, thing is, I never, I didn't think about it that way. I didn't think like I know this is going to blow up. I thought I like doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. So you just kept, continue to have just, fun. With I just it. do what I like. Right. All the shit that I do, if you think about it, I just do what I like. Whether it's stand up comedy or whether it's UFC commentary or whether it's doing a podcast, I do what I like. I do what I like. I don't think. 
oh, if I do this, it's going to be huge. I just do what I like. But that's the most empowering thing that is so hard. That's the most empowering thing that is so hard for people to feel comfortable enough to do it. It's hard, their life yeah. Because to turn it, in, turn it into, this motherfuckers is fuck bitches all the time. You know what I'm saying? They haven't figured out a way to get a W-9 or anything for it. People you know? get, they get nervous about the future too. You got you to gotta have enough confidence in yourself to take chances. Do you think that there are a lot of pussies out here? There's a lot of pussies out here. Is our country pussy? Our country has a lot of pussy in it because it's too easy to get by and it's human nature to become soft when when things are easy and when you're in any sign of any kind of struggle whatsoever that's when the real pussies emerge because they, they can't wait, handle wait, wait. any pressure they're, or they go well you they they see leave. them you see how bad they are yeah because they fall apart right. any adversity at all anything but this is beyond that now because of this. it's not beyond that now joe the reason why it's beyond that this is the thing that this is a, a personality trait or just as a side of not to say that um i'm a fan of donald trump or anything but it was certain things that i could understand where the thought comes from but how you articulate to people is all fucked up the way you articulate to people a, is it's like certain terrible people, at it certain it's terrible people at need it. filters certain yeah. people need like kanye west needs an interpreter you know what he needed he needed a coach because someone coached him for that second biden debate right. if you watch that second biden debate right. he was calm and cool let biden work himself up and stammer and lie about shit and he treat he had still attacked him, but he attacked him in a different way. The first time he did it, he was obnoxious. He kept talking over him. He didn't let him talk. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Everybody wanted to shut his mic off. But then someone must have coached him for this, or he realized himself. Man, I'm gonna tell to take you the different difference. Approach. I'm gonna tell you something. The difference. I'm gonna tell you something. The difference. Whatever numbers you say, the loser of this election still won, breaking a record. I know, isn't that crazy? Second place still was, second place would be first place any other time. In, in, any in, other time. Yeah. in history, it would have shitted on everything. That's nuts. It shows you know, everybody realize it's important to find, when you when you realize that a guy like Donald Trump can become president, you realize, oh my God, it's actually important to vote. <laughs> yo, bruh, the, the, you know, it has to, until you see those numbers, yo, it was like, it was crazy. It was like, in certain places, separated by 5,000 votes. I know. Ten thousand votes. Yeah, it's tight. And you could say you can make a here's the thing, you can make an argument, it could have went either way. Here's the situation. Man, Donald Trump let it be known that he didn't give a fuck about anybody but his base. Yeah. That's pretty it. much. That's it. And and I'm not saying if you if it's a numbers game, understand that. Like there's a certain amount of people that help you will help you get elected. There's a certain amount of people. That's why you have strategists and shit. They'll be like, if we do this, we get these robocalls here and everything. You know, it's the science to that. It's certain people that can help you get there. You well, know? if he... They, but he never made no... like. If he softened his approach up, I think the base would not have appreciated it. That's the numbers. They, it's like love him or hate him. It's right. very polarizing. And for, to hate him works for, right. for a situation. Whereas Biden, I don't think people love Biden. Something has to be... I don't think they dislike but him But they either. hate Trump. The people that voted for Biden hate Trump. Most of them. Or just feel like we just can't do this anymore. That's The a people lot that vo voted for Biden... Hate Trump, but they're not excited about him the way they're excited about Obama or excited about Clinton or no. excited about a million other presidents in the past. Not a million, you know yeah. But saying? for the most part, every time it switches over, it's because somebody goes totally opposite of what was going on. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, but you know? it's it's usually bullshit. You know, I mean, it's bullshit, this, man. But I'm like, man, these old stories, these old stories that they're repeating over and over again. Biden is filling up his cabinet with all these billionaire uh, hedge fund people's. Uh, like, not hedge fund people, Do but you like think Biden environment, like the the guy that is involved in, in environmental. He just he just hired some guy that the people guy? are upset about. I don't know what color is. I was reading about the uh, environmental that's advisor. To me, that's important to me because he Joe, worked that's for, important to me. Worked for a fucking oil company. The black part is important to me. An environmental advisor was taking money from fossil fuel companies. And they're like, hey, 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 hey. This guy has ties to fossil fuels, and you're doing something with him that involves the environment. There could be a conflict of interest. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If he's a black guy, okay. Yeah, if he's a black guy, we'll, really we'll find out right now.
I bet they probably I just wanna know. listen. This is I. I think they're probably going to hire a lot of Republicans. I That's really what do. They, did. they already started black guy. They're um, gonna they're gonna hire a lot of people that want to uh, listen. And in their defense, they probably think some radical uh, sh- things need to be done to kickstart the the economy right now. I'm, the economy's kind of fucked. I, I agree, but I don't know how they're going to be able to work together. <sighs> I think they're all dirty, bro. They all work together. Yeah. Here he goes. Uh, Biden just uh, appointed his climate black movement man, liaison. Black man, yes. Told you, son. It's a fossil fuel industry ally. Black. Yeah. There he is. Black. Is Looking it? black as shit. That's but, all I need, Joe. There you go. He uh, raked in big money from fossil fuel industry while waiting to help oil and gas come or voting rather to help oil and gas companies look how he's greeting him is different look he's it's like he's giving him com- knuckles hey fella yeah, my motherfucker there's a video of um lindsey graham and uh kamala harris fist bumping each other it's adorable kamala harris reaching across the aisle that that was a good move he's walking by fist bumps her. well she's the only good move she's strong you know she was a district attorney she got some questionable arrests on her of course there's some shit that it's she so did imprisoning like, people and keeping them in prison to use them as to fight wildfires and shit. But I, uh, in my community, I've heard people talk about her and everything. Like, what if she, if she uh, you, you, you have trust in her, you believe in her. What I did believe in was when she got elected to be the first female vice president, first black, black president. Within a couple of days, the commercials I've seen on different urban platforms or just period. It's been, you see a little black girl, right, looking up to something, mm-hmm. you know. We well, see that shadow with her standing there and the little yeah. black girls in the shadow. The black girls in the shadow. But the little girls are just showing, it's like this. You they could feel, be that they person. Feel, yeah, they feel yeah. black girl joy. They see something that's. She also, you know, she didn't and just. And I know she put motherfuckers she didn't just, But she didn't do just bad things. She did a lot of good things. She, she prosecuted a lot of ch- child sex predators, a lot of pieces of shit. A lot of bad people. She it wasn't just I the, with the just... situations where people should have been let out of jail and weren't. But there's also like this is a thing that we have to realize when it comes to district attorneys and just attorneys and prosecutors and defense attorneys in general. They're trying to win a game, and it gets dirty. When, when they, I tell you what, when my they're trying to prosecute experience? people. You haven't yet, but you, I'm sure you will. Sorry, go but ahead. when someone you're trying I'm to prosecute better. people or Sorry. defend people, the people defend people they know are fucking guilty. And they'll keep shit from the prosecution, even though they know they're defending a guilty person. They do it all the time. So and people prosecute wrong. people that they're not sure are guilty. And they'll pretend they're sure that that person's guilty because they want to win. And they'll withhold information that could potentially exonerate that person because they're playing a game. When you let people play a game, anytime you let people play a game and someone's trying to win, they cheat. They try to figure out a way to do better than you with, with influence by withholding things, by holding things back. They know this judge. They're tight with this lawyer. Right. They try to win a game. You've made it a game. So you got a prosecutor and you got a defense attorney. So you got two competing forces. You're always going to have lies. 100%. Because people play games. So that was the business she's in. Her saying, but you know, you said us it, Joe, saying that she did business, this. It's like that that's, the, that's her business. That's her business. And they are a business of words. Like you're saying, there's well, no personal She's in a business connection. of laws. She, How do I she win particularly? With laws. But laws yeah. are the word. How do I win with these words right here? Right. No okay. matter what right. you think, how do I win with this? Come on, Kamala, you know that's not right. We're not talking about right. We're talking about what we could prove. And that's what law is all about, right? Well, that is, if you are a defense attorney, that's your job is to protect somebody um, and try to get them off, even if they might be guilty. And if you're a prosecutor, your job is to prosecute somebody. You're not. Your job is not to go, hey, we might be wrong. Your job is not to go, hey, let's hold. But- the shady shit is when you don't play by the rules and you withhold inf- information or uh, or withhold evidence. And pe- people have done that in the past, and that's when things get real squirrely. Because, like, okay, now you're not playing the game. You're using your unfair advantage but of being able to suppress. But nothing surprises you. Nothing surprises no, you. No, it doesn't surprise me. But what I'm saying is it doesn't make a person all bad. Right. Like, she's not all bad. Like, she's done a lot of very good things. That's and the- I, I read an article about all the different things she did. Including the different things that she did that a lot of people thought were bad, like but threatening moms, job? threatening moms with uh, they would go to jail if their son was truant. But it turns out no one ever went to jail. It was a threat, and obviously it's terrifying to be a single mom and think you might get put in jail because your son is just running around and doesn't show up at school because you work two jobs trying to put food on the table. But nobody ever actually did get arrested and got, went to jail. Yeah, because it's going to be too hard to prove that shit, man. And some well, people, and in some cases, some people are 
And I don't know if this was the case. Some people are too lazy in certain situations, too. Well, I'm saying it's, it's not a good idea to threaten a mother because she's a single mom trying to get by and her son is not going to school. It's not good to threaten her with jail time. But sometimes people it though, make decisions. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> people make decisions, like drastic decisions like that. And maybe at the time they had a perspective that's different than the perspective that they have now. It's called evolution. I want everybody to have a, look. I want them to have a clean slate. Biden and Harris are in there now. I think clean slate. Forget about. But let's see what let, can happen. See what they can do. The best thing. See is who the people they put into office. All the the cabinet. Let's give them a chance. We want them to do well. This is what was so fucked up about Trump being in office. I don't so think many those people, people wanted him to him. do well. You're exactly. Right. So many people hated him. They really would rather the country do bad under what? him. Because the, if the country was killing it under him, he's like, look, it's killing it. I'm the best. I told you. Then everybody's like, fuck. Right. At least maybe please, even Trump supporters, go into this one with a different attitude. Let's let's all together say we want the best for America. What's in what's done is done. The election's over. Maybe you were a Tulsi Gabbard fan like myself. Maybe you like Bernie Sanders like myself, but maybe you like fucking Jim Yang Bush. Gang. Yang Gang. Yang Gang. I love Yang Gang. I love Andrew Yang. He's a yeah. he's an awesome guy. Yeah. I love a lot of his ideas. Right. But for now, we know where it is. It's Biden and Harris. Let's. let's but them niggas mad, them Joe. Them the motherfucking best. Trump, Trump, Trump. Or you got different level of Trumpers. Well, there's a and lot I'm of not, people that think they're so mad as a motherfucker that don't want to hear shit, son. Part of the problem is he's telling them that it's a rigged election. He's telling them that's what's so election. fucked up. But part of the problem is all elections have some corruption. They just fucking do. They've been around forever. But not enough for you to say, nigga. When you leaving, nigga. I don't think there's Did a... Did he keep his secrets and shit, Joe? Well, Mike Baker, who used to be in the CIA, was on here. Mike Baker or your Baker? Mike, his Baker. name is Mike Baker. Oh, I thought you said he Mike He was in the Baker. CIA, okay. and he came on the podcast recently. He was telling me that even if they did overturn it, even if they did rather uh, like find corruption, the amount of votes you're talking about in most of these states... It's not enough. It's not enough. Right, not nearly enough. But it would have to be crazy corruption. Yeah, like he's talking... These motherfuckers are talking about five or six people, bro. Yeah. And that's the petty shit. No, no, it's not five or six people. They, Man, they, every they've, time they have got them. There's, they've, I think they hundreds, uncovered... They uncovered two th different things today in... I want to say it's Michigan, where they found uh, a memory card that had... Uh, more votes for Trump than Biden, but it still it was close. It was like one thousand for Biden and one thousand a few hundred for Trump, like four or five hundred for Trump. Where did he get the memory card from, son? I do not know. Come on, Joe. I think there's a they lot could, of nigga could have showed us. Nigga could have brought up any memory card. So motherfuckers well, hand you a memory someone card. Someone who's counting votes got the memory card from the machine. Who told you that story? This is in the news. Which I, news outlet? It was in three or four different ones that I saw. And they all said the same thing. Well, they all said that there was a memory card that was discovered, and they showed the counts in the memory card. But they've also found like other ballots that didn't get counted yet. There's just a lot of disarray. You're dealing with human beings that are counting millions of votes. Millions. Millions. In the and they're counting a lot of them just paper. They're getting mail, and they're opening it up, and they have to find this out. This is what I didn't understand. This is what I understand, Joe. This was so funny. It kind of like backfired, right? That the mail-in votes is what killed Trump. That's what they're saying. Yes. For the most part. And the funny thing about it, Trump has the type of following that he literally could tell them to do anything, they're going to do it. He told motherfuckers not to mail in. Yeah. Well, he wanted to make a point, come in in, in person. Well, this is the But point, how do you right? make that, Joe, answer this question. How do you make that point? I understand making that point when you're not in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that would have been a great argument. In 16. Especially for old folks, right? For, for, for anybody right. that wants to participate, but the only thing they would stop them is if they're going to go outside and risk their lives. Right. So you're not thinking to give that person the opportunity to be a part of it? Yeah. And that's the part that kind of fucked it up. Well, I don't know if he, he definitely wanted people to vote in person, but did he ever encourage people to vote by mail as well? Or was no, he, he was always saying that mail was going to get a fraud? Son, right? this whole shit was crowds. I'm like, nigga, don't... Somebody, Secret Service, break the secret. Tell this motherfucker <laughs> that, yo, somebody tell this motherfucker that the corona is out here. He caught it. He knows it was out there. This nigga caught it, yeah. right, and gave all the Secret Service it. He gave but a lot they of people can't, it. Secret Service can't say nothing because they Secret Service. They got to keep it a secret. I'm sure they're young and healthy, too. They probably shook it off pretty easy. Decide the that people don't know. They probably got the same medicine he got, you know. 
I the mean, medicine is probably a lot of that medicine is called your immune system being up to par. As much as like everybody is talking about this shit, it's the lazy route. No one wants to say just a little bit of that. But they also gave him a bunch of experimental shit. They gave him these uh, this anti antibody uh, blood transfusion medication. They gave him uh, what was it called? Regeneron? Is that what it's called, Jamie? I think so. They gave him uh, some other. Uh, I don't know if it's experimental or if it's like recent recently been released. They gave him that that medication. They gave him a steroid. They gave him uh, a bunch of different things all at once. So he got a cocktail shit that made him feel great. I was going to say, not only that, son, how much is that cocktail? That's not no easy it's cocktail. Not it's not cheap. And uh, he wants that to be able to be given to everybody. But I don't know if that's feasible at the moment. Like that's they got to, to they make, make those money. doses. Well, it's not just to make the money. Just to make the doses. Like, say if they have all that medication and all the, the all that... Uh, blood antibody medication and all this different stuff they're going to give him the steroids to make that for 300 million people that's so many people so if everybody gets sick you have a dose if we have one dose for every human being in this country even if you have one dose for half you the can people, get it done if your money is right it's all a you would need 300 million vials of this shit that's so much you're not going to need all of those and probably more than that because but probably they wouldn't even multiple make that Joe, vials they wouldn't per even person make they wouldn't even make that number for every for everybody to get one. They would make that number. It's like it's got to be that number is going to be broken down by okay, what's the criteria to get this? You know what I'm saying? Well, also it would be how many people do we really want to get it to? Because how many people are going to be sick at any one given time? It's probably never going to be more than 25 percent of the population, even if it's high. But even if it comes out, Joe, motherfuckers, I'm telling you, the certain motherfuckers are not taking that vaccine for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, I the think black you're right. community yeah. is fuck. They not niggas ain't fuck with no vaccine too. It's like a uh, I iPhone, so you need a, the third one. <laughs> no black person is going to take it. I think there's a lot of people that are not going to take it, but I think what they think is uh, herd immunity. Once we get to 50% of the people that took it, the virus will probably die off. I think it's going to be in that neighborhood of 50% of the people that had it. If they, if if either 50% of the people either have had COVID or have the vaccine for COVID, they think we can hit herd immunity and it'll mostly die off. But it could always kick back in again. That's what they're worried about, that it's going to be like the common cold or the flu every year. Would you take a vaccine? Yeah, you for would? sure, if it works. Yeah. If it's been proven that it works, and I, I talk to doctors and they explain what the science is and how it works, and then I talk to people that have taken it and they say, you know, what the side effects are, because um, with the, the COVID vaccine, I think the side effects are you feel like shit for a couple of days. Who can't deal with feeling like shit for a couple yeah, of days? How happy are you when you, need, you can't lose t two days? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely do it if uh, I thought it was safe. Um, I don't know enough about it right now to say that I, th I think it, I mean that was one of the things that Nicholas Christakis was talking about yesterday He was talking about uh, the potential dangers to the vaccine And I appreciate that he brought that up because it's such a sensitive area for people They think that if you think there's a danger in any kind of vaccine, you're some sort of anti-vaxxer No, there's a potential for danger of any medication when you're dealing with m Mass numbers of human beings if you have 300 million people and you give them aspirin one I, mean, I don't know what percentage, but some, some people are going to die from aspirin or they're going to get really sick from aspirin. It's the same with everything. Uh, substances you put in people's bodies. Everybody reacts differently. People die from fucking Brazil nuts. You know, there's some. Yeah, but them motherfuckers want to waste time with these home remedies and shit, man. Them home remedies, I mean, they're cool for some people, but eventually, man, you're going to have to talk to somebody. Yeah, for sure. If you're if you got a real disease, you know, if you the, the, the people that want to cure like cancer by not going to a doctor like, whoa, <sighs> they can fix it now. Like right. there's a lot of cancers, not all of them, of course, but, but there's a lot of can't you're way better off having cancer now with modern medicine than you was, were having it 15, 20 years ago. That said, a, all that remedy shit, all that like the best remedy for all this, besides the medicine if you actually get sick, is to fucking take care of yourself. Right. That's what I'm hoping people get out of this. More I don't people understand why take people care ignore of that. themselves. Yeah. I don't it's understand. Easy. It's convenient. During this time, I don't understand how you could ignore that. Because it's convenient. As long as you're not sick, you don't think you're gonna get sick. Right. You stay home. If you don't have to go anywhere, you just stay home. And a lot of people just they just stop exercising, they stop eating well, they stop drinking water, and they fuck their body up. And then if something does, you don't realize like how much of a difference it makes in being healthy and not being healthy when something hits you, a virus hits you, a cold yeah. hits you. You see, like when- When I got shot, son. There you go. I had to get the IV, I had to get the fucking um, the, um, IV antibiotics, son. Well, you guys get 
IVs all the time. You're always doing uh, vitamin IVs on tour. Right? Vitaflow. Vitaflow. Um, it's a company. That's such a good move. It is. You when did we, it too. When we did that, the first that was the first time I'd ever done that. that well, really? Vitamin IV, yeah. I mean, I, maybe I'd done Yo, one but you once got, before You was then. on it hard, son. Oh, I'm on it hard Yo, now. you had everything open. You was like, give me one right here. You had <laughs> half your ass outside. I'm like, what you got? She Yo, gave me a B12 like, shot in my ass. And I saw your ass. Yeah. I was sitting right there. I'm like... <laughs> I was like, nigga, take that shit across the street. <laughs> he had his fucking stomach out and his ass out. I was like, I'm not scared. I don't. I know you're not. You're it was friends. like, wah wah wah. Yeah, well, the the glutathione was amazing. Um, th- um, that stuff is great. Uh, the vitamin drip was amazing. We started getting them uh, every week. We had we slacked off though once we got here to Texas. We haven't been doing it in Texas. Man, that motherfucker. I'm telling you about when I did Yellow Springs this summer. That was probably. One of the things that um, made that uh, experience so amazing is that we were living in our own bubble and playing by our own rules, and everybody was having a good time, and it was all productive. Yeah, you know, and it worked. It, it worked. Was fucking you guys put on a lot of shows. Adult summer camps. Like, yeah, it's it beautiful. was like the shows were one thing, but the thing that was great for me was just the whole sense of community. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would have potlucks and shit, and then I would have all the housewives of Yellow Springs, like, <laughs> ascend. Yo, them motherfuckers out there, them motherfucking Yellow Springs chicks, wives, they won't get upset with anything but a casserole dish, son. Like, they was looking for a Rachel Ray casserole dish I had for, like, a week. They was stalking where I was living and everything. But the sense of community, man, is like, in that area, it's one coffee shop, Dino's, everybody go there. It's one grocery store. It's just one of everything. That's nice. And it was so simple. Well, that's better, really. Than, uh, this, this, there's real good things about cities, but the thing that's missing is that camaraderie, that sense of community. Nature. Yeah. City slickers. They were calling me a city slicker. I saw the videos of you in the river. You guys are- <laughs> Yo, Joe, it was the whitest, greatest adventure of the summer. I became... The river nigga, right? <laughs> That's the original name. I'm telling you the truth, son. But yo, you. yo, listen, you look son. so peaceful. I am at peace, son. Listen, Joe. I first. What does it say on the the, the, the quote there? Forever mood. River bitches love the, the river, river ninja. ninja. They do, son. <laughs> bitches love me out there, son. All them earthy bitches that got quartz and rocks and shit, son. Yo, I'm talking about bitches, farmers market bitches out mm-hmm. there like me. I understand what you're saying. They love me. Do- like women with rescue dogs. That's a great picture, man. Jamie, get Look that. Look how peaceful I was, son. I was a river nigga. I had Jamie, to change the name, Joe. Get that picture framed. I need that picture. Let's uh, let's get that picture printed on, on steel. Get that. Yo, I had to, who took the pho- photograph? Uh, um, Federico. Federico, did I tag him? Yeah. Where is Federico? There he is. Get a hold of Federico. We need that picture in the studio. Yo, he's such a talented fucking producer and everything. Beautiful. Man. But that would be a great picture to frame in here. Yo, I fell in love. Joe, people think it's a the joke. river. Like it's the first, nature. Are you gonna let me describe mm-hmm. me? Yeah, I'll let you. First name it came up with, Joe, it was River Nigga, right? And I, I like that for the streets, right? But people's like, I don't know if we can put that on T-shirts. So <laughs> they're looking at it from a market branded point, right? And I was like, okay, Ninja. You know what I mean? But he's inspired by the River Nigga. Mm. But Ninja's for TV. There's many layers to the story. Many layers to it. Do you fish? I fish. Did this, you go fishing at all when you guys were down there? I didn't there? get a chance to go fishing there. But this was me at a river oh. in... Um, in Georgia, son. Changes your mind, right? It's everything. Son. Changes your mind. When you buy a waterfall, you're like, oh. There's something about these natural things like mountains. Nature, or nigga. Ocean. Nature, yep. nigga. Nature. Yep. Yep. Nature free as shit, son. Yep. It's good for you. Look at me, son. Let me tell you. I know exactly. They said when did I when did I turn into a river nigga? Right? They said, when did I turn? When do I remember to change? Right? It was when. Look at that waterfall, man. That's crazy. Yo, let me tell you the story, son. So, when we were out there, Chappelle's wife used to make these events. Hey, it's family walk day. I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm from the streets. I'm not doing all that stupid (laughs) shit. She had all these days, like, every day had a goddamn adventure or a star. What's today? You got to look at the little brochure and shit. And then one day she did one and was kayaking, right? And I went on this kayak. It was me and my man Patrick. He's in Yellow Spring. He's a Yellow Spring native, whatever. 
and we were going down the river, Mad River. I had a kayak, he had a kayak. We were smoking a joint, and we just hear nature. It's like, <laughs> just straight nature, right? And then he said, man, you know what this reminds me of? He said, this reminds me of when I was younger, building ramps, jumping ramps on my bike, and me uh, fishing for crawdads with my dad. And I was like, nigga, this reminds me of looking for my dad. <laughs> his stories, the two stories were totally opposite. It represented one thing for him, memories he had with his dad. For me, it represented the memories I didn't have with my dad and the memories I wanted to create with my son. You know what I'm saying? When I was out there, Joe, all I'm thinking was like, I gotta bring this little motherfucker to the river. To the river. He's gotta be out here, he's got friends out there. And my son came out there and the summer was beautiful. But one thing was missing, no matter how you're celebrating in life, right? If you're not sharing it with your family, it feels weird. Yeah, for you sure. You know, it feels like, oh man, I don't even know if it's fair for me to have this much fun. And uh, although how great the summer was going, when he came out, he was hanging with me on the river and shit, man. It was like the best shit ever. Son, we were skipping. Jamie, you know how to skip rocks? Of course. Do you know how to skip? Yeah. It's in the wrist, right? I was in the Boy Scouts. Yo, don't say you're in the Boy Scouts today, son. Why? <laughs> they might have played with your booty holes, son. <laughs> Yo, it's a lot of them, man. Don't tell me. Don't be proud of the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Pick another division, son, not the Boy Scouts. Um, but nothing we ever skipping. happened to my booty hole. I Good. had a great time. I hung, was, out, hung out with a bunch of criminals. That's what you do in the Boy Scouts. Yeah. We were skipping rocks. Like, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it was that much precision. It depends on the rock. rock. Like, you really want a nice flat rock. A nice flat rock. You get rock. a flat rock, you could do some wild shit. When we were going out every day, Talib Kweli, right? He thinks he's a river nigga, right? He told us one day, I could skip any rock. You know what any type rock. of... He said, any, he said, no matter how big it is, I could skip any rock. That doesn't seem likely. That's the fucking Brooklyn cockiness he had, right? Yeah. It was just like... Dush, dush, dush. <laughs> It was like, the next time we went, he wants to challenge me in rock skipping again. This time, this motherfucker was pulling rocks out of his shorts. He had rocks with him already? <laughs> he prepared? Wow. Joe, he Invasive came- Invasive rocks. He came with all perfect flat river rocks. Oh, that's crazy. He didn't bend over- Is there a world championship of uh, rock skipping? It seems like people would take it super seriously. I think it would. I think it's something to think. I'm pretty sure it's done somewhere. I never thought about it to this moment, but what? I'm sure there's gotta be a competition. A rock skipping competition. And they got groupie bitches. <laughs> like Yo, the, the girls who, it's off season for bowling. Right. So they go after rock skippers. Yeah. We, we heard you had a 10 skipper last week. <laughs> a 10 skipper could get you a blowjob, son. That's going to get you some WAP. If you're looking for WAP, do a 10 a skipper, ten son. skipper. You know what WAP is, right? I do. Yeah. Who educated you to it? Because I don't think, no disrespect to your hip hop or whatever. I don't. Someone introduced you to WAP. Um, I don't know. It might have been Jamie. Was it you? Uh, Could yeah, be. Yeah, because of the Ben Shapiro video. Oh, that's her. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which was it? Because <laughs> <laughs> Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro, it was like you know when some people self own, they don't realize they're self owning. Right. He, when you know the songs about wet ass pussy, he's like, well, that sounds like a gynecological condition. I would tend and, to agree. And, and people are like, what? But I, That's not the point, Ben. I know the point is, but I understand that <laughs> that's like, that's an, that's, I understand this point. That's an abnormal amount of moisture. Yes. To be able to come up with a whole song about it, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a level. What do you think would happen if you came out with a song called Hard Ass Dick? I, I want to do it. It would not be re received that well. As, with as minimal controversy as what happens. Certain pussy. songs got to be answers. Right. Like answers yeah. to a song. To wet ass pussies. K. Michelle had a song, You Can't Change a Man, right? Mm -hmm. And I flipped it and did a song called You Can't Raise a Bitch. You Can't Save a Bitch. That was the name of the song. You can't Save a Bitch. Do you remember when they used to have songs and then they would have answer songs? And then, like, there's been a bunch of those, right? Where they would, someone would have a song and then someone, like, Someone would have a, a response song to that like, song. Like um, Scrubs. Yes. They had Scrubs. Was, and then they had another one. It was, I can't remember, but I know you Wasn't said. Wasn't I Saw You Standing in the Rain? Wasn't there one of those? Orange Juice Jones. I saw, wasn't there an answer I'm song to my, that? If I know any answer Orange to Orange Juice Jones. If I know any answer to that, I just immediately told how old I am. To know Orange Juice Jones 
and how cool he was. Orange Juice Jones was the shit. That song was the best at a, at a time. That was an original kind of song. There never been a song that told the whole story of getting done wrong like that. Especially it didn't tell it in the rain. Right. Like everybody knows that story, but right. you followed this couple in the rain. Yeah. And then at the end, when he chops he got up back the credit with cards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like he's like, "Go, on, bitch, get out of here." He had his credit cards and everything. Yeah. That was a song that made people happy. Hey Joe, I came over here. I'm not selling shit, but I do. <laughs> hey, Joe, I'm you got more stuff? Yeah, look, you remember this, right? Remember my black ash, right? Yes. All right, here. That's the re-up. Thank you. Yeah, re up We kept the other something. one in California because we weren't sure if we were going to go, be going back and forth. Yeah, you got that one. Look at this one right here. There's some holes in this house candle. That's for a holiday, oh, Joe. It's a ho, ho, ho. Yo, Joe, hose. It don't stop. Not like H O E. Joe, There's some know. hose in this house candle. That's a yo. That's a look at this one though, Joe. Cause I fell in love with Yellow Spring. That's one of my top sellers. Joe. Oh, Yellow Spring candle, yeah. from the streets to the creeks, from the hood <laughs> to the woods, from whores to oars, from Adidas to Tevas, son. I got a whole store. Boom. And this for the white chicks out there, cause I got a lot of white bitches out there now. Okay, Karen Candle. Mm -hmm. Imagine yeah. if your name was Karen nah, and you were fine and look, for Joe, like 30 years. Joe, there's more. Look at this, son. That's a I feel like bag, all of a sudden son. we turn into the home shopping network. That's what I wanted to From avoid, Joe. But at the, the same time, at the same time, I opened up an online store, son, and it's doing well. Okay. That's Do you it. have a website that we could just put up on screen instead of like yep. bringing all these objects out one after another? Joe. Here you it call it. No, listen. Mm. Oh, you have like a little thing. Like you scan something. with the phone. You call it's them you, objects. Dude. I don't call it objects. Uh, products. Man, give me my candle back. <laughs> what is it if it's not a product? No, just if you don't want them, Joe, give I them do. back. I do. You going to use them? I'll definitely use them. All right. I like candles. Those are good, too. Okay. And they're soy, too. They're soy. Yeah, and they're hand poured in the you USA. You can have them back. I'm not into so I don't do anything with soy. It's a candle, man. <laughs> Don't disrespect that. People want that. People get mad at soy. Soy is like a political fruit or a uh, vegetable. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People call you a soy boy. If you're a Republican, people call uh, weak men soy boys. That's like a, a, it's an insult. I never knew that. Soy is one of the rare foods that's actually attached to being a bitch. That's a pussy food? Yeah, like if you're, if you're a guy who's really into soy. And this is not my perspective. This is just, I just think it's a fucking... It's a plant. It doesn't matter to me. Right. It's uh, isn't that edamame? Isn't that soy? Like when you have edamame at a, uh, yeah. a Japanese restaurant, isn't it soy? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that is that the case, Jamie? The first time I ever tried edamame, I was so ghetto. Did you I, eat the whole thing? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, my throat was killing me, son. The best part is the outside. I didn't know they put anything all the about it. Goddamn salt and everything in the outside. The sea salt. Yeah, some sea salt. If I you never... had a bowl of just edamame. It takes away from it. You wouldn't even want it. It's the whole process. Yeah. It's the whole process of, of like ripping the sleeve. Edamame beans are whole, immature soybeans, sometimes referred to as vegetable-type vegetable soybeans. They're green and different color from regular soybeans, which are typically light brown, tan, or beige. Yeah, so it's the soy. Uh, I like edamame. I yeah, don't what? mind soy, but a lot of people think of soy as being like uh, bitch food. I never knew that. I thought it was a healthy. I mean, I knew that it was not the most masculine food, but I, I thought it was like you stepped your game up. When you enter the edamame lane, it's like, oh, shit, this motherfucker eat edamame now. I he think changed. there's a reason. I think soy lowers your testosterone. I think there's and, like estrogen. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. What? Soy isoflavones can produce estrogen-like activity in the body, mimicking the effects of natural estrogen. Yeah. But I think you, you can grow titties off of soy? Not quite, but it might feminize you. <laughs> It might feminize you. Fuck plants, soy, man. Plants affect your, your hormone production. Do you know they, they actually develop testosterone, like synthetic testosterone from wild yams? Like plants, yeah. From wild yams? Wild yams, yeah. That's how they, that's how, uh, they develop some um, artificial testosterone or exogenous testosterone. I would think that that would be part of the whole Silas, um, Cialis and... Blue pill era. That's too. a different thing, though. That's just blood flow. That's nitrous oxide. So why is nobody promoting wild? Not yams? nitrous oxide. Nitrous. Uh, what, what is it? What is it? Nitric, nitric oxide. Um, that's like uh, NO explode. All those pump things you do when you want to get jacked, when right. you're lifting weights. A lot of those those uh, supplements. 
they mimic the same sort of effect, just not to the same degree as like finasteride, like ad, uh, like uh, Viagra and Cialis and shit like that. But they don't they don't make you have more testosterone. What these like soybeans and I I, th- I think really t- for it to affect your hormones, I think it's just like it can. It's a fa- it's a possibility like chemically, but in order to actually do it, I think you'd have to eat some fucking preposterous <laughs> number of soybeans. <laughs> I don't think it's like it's something people really have to worry right about. It. No, I don't think it's anything think anybody so. really has to worry about. But I think it's just a stereotype. I didn't people, even know that the thing was yeah. just odd for me. I didn't even know the stereotype. Yeah, they call I people thought, soy boys. I didn't know that. I thought it was like a, a like you you're evolving as a foodie. You know, like the first time I had, I was like, oh shit, y'all niggas don't know about the edamames. Because I was introduced to somebody else to it, but I didn't know that it symbolized being a pussy. It doesn't. It's silly. It's people are silly. Tastes yeah, good. Yeah, but edamame I tastes good if they do it right. Put a little chili powder and salt on the outside. I like it with just sea salt. I like it sea salt too. I'm working at a stadium, Joe. Are you really? Yeah. What are you doing? RFK Stadium. Where's that? In Washington D.C. When are you doing that? Uh, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Oh shit! It's not the stadium; it's the parking lot, right? <laughs> you doing like but an outdoor show? I'm doing an outdoor show, just like the the ones that Bert's been doing. Have yeah, but it's not at that level. Yeah, I talked to Bird about that. Shout out to Bird and shout out to the cab. Bird is the guy who started it all off. People aren't giving him enough credit. He's the uh, he's the OG of drive through shows. Yeah, Bert it was, was the guy. Like, it fit right into his whole shit. He never stopped touring. Bert toured through the, the entire pandemic doing drive throughs. And I was saying to myself, drive-ins. is this like a throwback Thursday or whatever? He was like this, and then the name of what was the summer? What was the name of the tour? The um, Hot, Hot Summer, summer Nights. Tour. Hot Summer Nights. I'm like this motherfucker, but. He created the bubble and he fucking did it. Created a bubble, stayed drunk the entire summer, and enjoyed it. Had a good time. I'm yeah. doing RFK Stadium. It's the original um, stadium for the uh, for the um, Washington Driving Redskins. Comedy. The Washington Redskins used to do that. Beautiful. But for nine years, that was my uh, traditional show at the DC Improv. I would do Thanksgiving weekend. Mm. It was a good time for me because I got to see my family. I got to work. That's a great club, too. It's a great that DC, club. Cl- that DC Improv is one of the 10 greatest clubs in the country. And it's been probably the most consistent for 25 years. So good. It's just the perfect size, perfect. Everything about it's perfect. And they get every year solid. It's, I don't even know that a comic can do bad in terms of ticket sales there. Everybody seems to do well, at least the lineup well, they, that they have. They book good lineups. Right. Like When a club's got that much prestige, they've been around that. There's certain clubs like Comedy Works where people just trust them. You know, right. uh, there's a bunch of helium in Philly. People right. just trust them. This is going to be a good show. They're not going to book any scrubs. Right. And that's that's the, how the DC improv is felt. Like this, I, they have developed a community. A real, you know? And I for, for nine years, I saw my son from I mean, the first time I took him up. It was just him in my arms. And then the next time he was kind of like crawling. Then the next time he was walking, then he walked to the stage. I had like four years of pictures of his growth there. And then because of the pandemic, I thought the weekend was going. I'm like, damn, that blows a tradition. Yeah. And then they pivot. They made a pivot from the DC Improv to partnering up with um, DC Pull Up or whatever it is, and they're doing the fucking outside shit. That's beautiful. I like that people are adapting. That's one of the things you were saying. Like you started this business, and Bert started doing things outside, and Tom Segura is doing like these pay per view shows. Right. Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer are doing these, and and sometimes Christina they switch up back and forth. Right. They're doing these. Crazy live shows. I saw they the shit that he sends me. I mean, I'll show it to you, what you after mean? the show. The things that they can see during these live shows, it's a hundred percent uncensored because right. it's pay per view. So they don't have to worry about YouTube. They don't have to worry about it's whatever. They are showing the most fucked up videos I have ever seen in my life. Oh. In my life, really? In my life. Like he he sent me three oh. things yesterday that changed my idea of what's possible. Oh my God! Yeah, you gonna do it? Do one of his shows? Yeah, um, I would certainly do it if we were in town together. And he's, you know, Tom's talking about moving here. If he moves here, everybody niggas moving out here. Yeah, well, we're you got the whole squad club. coming back here. We're gonna open up a club here. I'm down, son. Come on down. It's better here. You don't have to pay taxes for the state. People are nicer. The they said the, off the, the street hook. on the streets. They said they, and on the streets. They said Joe ain't stupid, son. <laughs> <laughs> The street said that nigga said I'm getting the fuck up out of here, sir. Well, I but saw think- the writing on the wall. I'm like, they're not gonna open up the clubs. If you don't have a comedy club open, I can't right. stay. If I'm if if the comedy store was open, there would be no reason for me to leave LA. I know. But then at the, the, at the same the same on the flip of that, uh just because it's not open, it's not 
there's no reason for you to be you in can, LA. Be that. You, you can, can create, create it. it. Well, and the only what, time I could create it, though, is in an absence of the club. So, because I wouldn't ask people, hey, leave LA. The comedy store is no. hopping and killing. Come to come to Austin. But when you can't open, they can't. They're not allowing them to open, and right. it could be years. Who the fuck knows now? I know. Right here we are now, eight months in. No one ever. We thought it was two weeks. But Do you remember again, when you thought it was two weeks? So it was two weeks. But then again, even moving forward, Joe, we you got to remove the possibility of something taking. You got to remove yourself from the possibility of somebody taking something away from you. And like with like me, that, yeah. like that, like yeah. you, like what you, the, the way you're thinking, and the way Dave has thought throughout this summer was that was like, yo, we really can make this shit. Yeah. Well, also what we were saying before that we were all connected to Hollywood because we thought we needed Hollywood right. in order to get us on television, in order to pay our bills. We needed to get hired, and then once podcasting came along, I think world. people realized, no, you don't. You just need your friends. And you have a bunch of funny friends, and everybody's tight, and everybody tells people, hey, go see you know, Theo Vaughn's at this place. Go see this guy. Go see that guy. And we all get along together. We don't need That's anybody tough, else. Yo, but Joe, the toughest part, what did I notice in this podcast world, which is predominantly white, that's the truth of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's a lot more white podcasters. When it comes to that, when you say like the friendship part and making money, they really – about that life. They really do it. Yeah. They really do it. They don't talk about it. Every one of the guys that I've done, you know, from Dalia, from Bobby, from the whole crew, it's never no, oh, man. It's like, Everybody helps let's everybody. Do it. Yeah. Everybody's friendly. And there's only a few people in the podcast world that don't have friends. They're weirdos. Who are they? Are, I don't know. They're out in the they fringes. Gotta have names. They're out in the fringes. All right. Those poor people, they, they're, they, a lot of people go into things with like a legacy attitude and the legacy attitude that you know from radio is you're competing against the other people that are doing the same thing. Right. But the podcast world is not like that. But some people are like that. Like some people will complain if a guest is on this podcast and then on their podcast, they'll complain. Well, you were just on that podcast. Now it's going to take away from people listening to me. Nigga, I got more shit to talk about. Exactly. You ain't got no life. Well, not Yo, only that, I never understood crazy. that son. They like, oh, I'm like, nigga, every podcast I go on, it's talking about something else. And not only that, but if you go oh, on a podcast and they like you, if you go on a podcast and they like you, and then I hear now you're going to go on Bobby's podcast, I'm going to watch you on that podcast too. Right. Because it's not like I'm going to, like, I do one podcast and now I'm out of time. Not no, only that, but I'm I have a- more time. There's, you're going to have another week is going to go by where you want something to listen to. And then more people are going to listen to you on Bobby's if they heard you on somebody else's. And here's the thing, Joe. If you're interested enough for motherfuckers want to listen to you, yes. that's it. If you could do it, the toughest part this week, literally, is I think the anniversary of the first time I've ever was on this show. Really? I think it's this week. Jamie's checking. I heard those fingers, son. My producers don't do that. Them bitches be looking at me right in my face. <laughs> yeah. I'll be trying Number, to. T- uh... It is right. Yeah, I guess. What was it? The- was that? No, I mean, you were on before that, right? February nineteenth. No. no, you were on before that one. That before that one? No, yeah. this so is the so first the, one the, we talked about the RZA shit. Yeah, that, that was that one. That was a year ago this week. Yeah, that's oh. when November twelfth. So, but yeah, but you've been on longer. That. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying when, from the last one. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So I know you guys want to break down the story. It's not that sentimental, but I was just saying I remember the dates. Yeah. No, I get it. Was it. that? And it's been like, it's been I've been doing it for a year, and it's been um. It's been interesting. It happens, right? It gets, it picks up steam, it picks up momentum. I see on your Instagram stories, you're putting, or your uh, Instagram rather, you're putting clips up. The little assets and shit. Get people excited. Yeah. Yeah, but if, yo, you, like everything you said, it was like, once I got out of the mode, like, I'm like, ah, this has to be the greatest episode. I'm like, wait a minute. And I start looking at the numbers of the most successful people in the podcast world. This is like episode 1,582. <laughs> That's a lot. Yo, son. Just I'm struggling fun. for like, yeah, this is the 30 episode anniversary. Well, you know how Goggins tells everybody he used to be fat? I tell everybody, go to episode one. It's fucking terrible. Right. It's terrible. We we didn't even think it was a podcast. That's how terrible it was. But you it was. did it. We were doing it with uh, just answering questions off of Twitter and, and being stupid while we were high. No one thought it was ever going to be something that millions of people listened to. Right. So when we started it out, it wasn't 
you know, there was no expectations. Now right. people have expectations. They want now to be- you realize like how much money is in it. You see all these people that get big deals. You see all these people that are you know number one on iTunes and number two on fucking Spotify, and you go fuck. Like right. there's there's a lot going on. This is a whole network that Man. you don't need a lot to get into. Man, the number one thing you have to do, and I kept tricking myself. And we had talked about it was talking. Can you talk? That's and- ridiculous that you don't think that you could talk. It's one of the most funny things I've ever heard. <laughs> Son, I mean, with no response, just like me oh, talking to myself. That's easy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I got a better chance of making a thousand people laugh than one person. True. You know? Yeah. But it's been a it's been a great ride, man. My dude Deary over there, Julius. You know who's the best at just talking? Bill Burr. That motherfucker. I know. Just he never has a dead moment. He will start on a subject and like you know, and then you know what they want to fucking do, and then <laughs> next thing you know, I used to an before, hour later, he was one of the guys that had it. I was like, what would your style be more like? I just like I don't want to fucking talk to nobody. I just want to say what I want to fucking say and fuck you. And then it was like the Monday rant or something. He yeah, had. Monday morning podcast. Monday morning podcast, and it was just like I was like. This motherfucker can talk shit for whatever. It's like, whatever. It's like a dude that goes, he like wins all the bar fight conversations. And it's the perfect platform for that. Oh, for Bill, it's the perfect platform. One of the things he used to do is he used to use his cell phone. And this is when, oh God, the early days of the Monday morning podcast. I don't know when it started. I bet you it had to be around 2000. Um, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there. It could be. I don't remember. But what I do remember is that he he did a bunch of them where he like left voicemails. So he would call himself or call a service and leave a voicemail. Really? So he'd be sitting there at the airport talking shit about some dude's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he, he had some. It was just just him really ranting, just yeah, fucking with people. The audio quality was fucking terrible because he was literally talking into an old phone. At the airport, and then leaving a message somewhere, and that message became the podcast. And you know what? And it, but it was hilarious. It, it didn't even matter the quality of the sound. The yeah. idea was funny. Just yeah. like when I told you that time when Jamie was supposed to help me produce, and then he fucking reneged on me. <laughs> right? Right? He got real mad at me, whatever. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm, I understand. I don't you know how those two are connected, but, but Bill Burr... When he when he first started out, like that was literally the perfect platform for him in podcasting. Like he's good at interviewing people. I've been on a show before. Uh, other people have been on a show before. He'll he'll sit and talk to people. He's fine at it. But as far as like ranting, he's the best. Yeah, that's he, coming he's from the, a, he's that's the best. Come from an angry place. Yeah, but he's also been doing it the longest. You got to think how many fucking years he's been doing that podcast where he just that muscle is flexed. That muscle is tight. He doesn't need like. You can form an opinion, but he doesn't need the response. Most people right. need the response and the right. feedback. How how else do you know if you're doing good or not? Yeah, he doesn't think about that. He's like, and another thing. <laughs> I was watching <laughs> Seth Meyer the other night, and it was a he was doing this monologue or whatever, and it was going okay. And then um, uh, he, uh, some people in the background were laughing, and you could just see. The posture and everything changed. Once he got a couple of people laughing, it was like, that's important. That's I heard his Netflix special is good. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw, saw a clip on it, and it did not look bad. It did not look bad. When is this? Is this recent? Because I know he had one. I want to say his Netflix special was at least a year ago, because it was pre-pandemic for sure. I didn't see the entire thing. And I, I saw some clips, and I was like, this is good delivery. It's yeah. good writing. And I'm not, I don't know that Seth Meyers like, really had a, a long background in stand-up, did he? No. He had a Not background that doing that show, doing the monologue for the show, but I, 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 but most I, of those I think guys. stand-up was very good. <coughs> Whoa. I thought it was solid. Did you ever see it, Jamie? Mm. It's solid. It came out the end of October oh. last year. Mm, you all right? Jesus. That's it's not a good time to be coughing. Mm. It was uh, very good in terms of what I saw, the clips. I didn't watch the whole thing. but well, Most of the guys, when they um do SNL, <coughs> mm 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 but you know, there's some people that have done talk shows and then tried to do a, a stand-up special, and they don't really have the chops for it. But that didn't seem like that with him. Yeah, he seemed very relaxed. He probably was in a beast for a while. 
Well, he probably he probably did the right thing too. He probably hired a bunch of writers. I mean, I didn't see all of it. Maybe the part that I saw was the only funny thing. I really have no idea. A lot of those guys, I guess, when they like when they, I guess to be buried into that show like that, yeah, it's you don't hard, really have man. time to go out and work out and no, and, it's hard and work that. But if you could do it, like Jimmy Kimmel could do stand up for sure, hundred percent. Jimmy Kimmel wanted to <laughs> do stand up, one hundred percent he could do it. He would what be do great you think about it. Jim Carrey on SNL as Biden? I didn't watch it. None of it. Nope. Not one piece of it. Not a piece. God damn, son. I got shit to do. If I'm gonna watch something, um, I generally when I get home, I like to watch like. Things that have nothing to do with what's going on right now. By the end of the day, I don't. I oh, mean, you like documentaries Seth, and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, new Netflix special lets you skip the Trump jokes. Oh, you, there's a button you can yeah. skip Trump jokes. Yeah, ah. you can skip the intro on Netflix. You could skip um, past the the chunk of stuff. But this is him talking to people, so he's interviewing people. Well, this is just an interview about it. Oh, interview CNN, about it. Like oh, okay. Promo. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, well, that's a good move because people are tired of Trump jokes. You know, it's one of those yo, subjects yo, where people are like enough already. Man. I've been tired of them, and now I'm like They're coming back to, around for them to come to be frustrated, to be frustrated when a dude is on his way out. You know, it doesn't make no sense. It's like he is still getting to you. You know, it's just a matter of time. If you want to say the people, the voice of the peoples was heard. It was a close situation, but it is what it is and he's gone why are you still mad people have some legitimate gripes and i understand where they're coming from but my perspective is it's not changing anything and it's not doing you any good to still be holding on you're if you Man. are anti-trump biden's see, i mean i don't think it's 99 percent official right i mean they just haven't said it yet and they when they say it then he will be become president and then kamala harris will be the new vice president so Concentrate on good things right. now. It's over. Right. But people are so obsessed. I heard the fucking the other day. I might have said this earlier. Look at Mike Pence and him having a meeting with no mask. Man, okay. Why you still keep getting mad? Because this motherfucker don't have a mask on. It's got to be something else to talk about, son. But this, they, they want to <laughs> talk about negative things. That's the thing. Some yeah. people get addicted to talking about negative things and they can't regroup even after a victory, and now focus on positive things. They want to continue to focus on negative things. And I can see their perspective, too, especially with all these crazy tweets like, I won that election, you know, it's all fraud, it's all this, it's all that. Like, man, if you've got some real claims, and I don't know what the claims are, I haven't really honestly investigated them, but if you've got some real claims, you got to present the evidence, and then, once you present the evidence, you say all the stuff like, I got robbed, I really won it. If you want to be in a position where you're respected, right. if you're the president of right. the United States, this isn't a regular guy. It's not like if you were involved in some ridiculous, like, small neighborhood election and you were joking around on Twitter, I won that fucking election. Right. That's, that's, that's to be expected. But when someone's in a position where they're in charge of the nuclear football... Come they on, they son. literally are the commander in chief of the greatest army the world's and ever firing known. Motherfuckers. And you're saying shit like that and firing people that don't agree with Yo, it. Fire up, fire motherfuckers that like I know these other places like boy, well, this would be a great time for a fucking terrorist attack right now. Well, one of the guys he fired, what the guy said was he didn't believe there was widespread voter fraud. He's like, You're fired. If you don't believe that, you're fired. Like, this is part, this is like a madman. The interesting part for me is like you trying to switch the thoughts of a person that is a huge Trump fan is a waste of time. Waste you're of only time. gonna be the only thing you're gonna yeah. be is frustrated. See, here's the thing though. I don't know, and this is where it's really important. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how the election went down in terms of like was there like zero point zero one percent fraud? Was was there zero point five percent fraud? How much fraud was there? We gotta assume that when there's people counting stuff, there's some fuckery going on. Yeah, but the fuckery that's been reported, it's been like still no more than like right. forty people, bro. And then the only other problem is that it's all done through these machines, right? And then there's been all these conspiracy theories about machines that were supposed to have been giving the votes to Trump, gave those votes to Biden. Now, I could repeat those things, but I don't know if they're true. But I I, what I do know you is... You know what I'm saying? I do know is that, but I know Georgia. I know the motherfuckers pulled all them envelopes up to the building, and they cut them open, and they took a man by hand. 
they did them hand by hand. Yo, those yeah. those ones that were recounts or whatever, those you can't. It's no machine that it's hand by hand. Right. It's fucking probably. And how does that work? Did they? Does someone watch while they do it? Like, do they have a supervisor? Because I would imagine you would want to have like almost like two people watch while one person does it, which is so ridiculous. But it seems like you kind of if you it don't trust like people, you, I know if you don't trust people, you kind of have you, to have someone watching it. That's part of the argument that Trump's uh, it, administration was saying too, was that there were uh, certain counts that they weren't allowed to observe. They had to be really far away and they couldn't actually see. Listen, that sounds like people that like soybeans, sir. Huh? It, but that's a very soybean. That's a very yes. soy boy attitude. But, but what if they're telling the truth? Here's the thing. I don't know, and you don't know either. So if they were telling the truth and people were counting votes incorrectly or... They find no evidence of that. Every time that he... I don't think they have either. Every time that they, they came out with all these losses and they're ju dropping them, dropping them because there's no evidence of it. He's probably made... He's, he, he's had to have made every argument he can make. No, listen, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, there's no evidence that they can present that's going to show people right now that there was so much voter fraud right. that they got to return everything right. and start all over or they got to give it to Trump. Right. Like I agree with you. I think this is what all these experts are saying. They're all saying that even if there was voter fraud, it wasn't enough to tilt the election one way or another. But I don't know how these machines work. So if I'm even commenting on it, if I'm saying they couldn't have done it, that's ridiculous. I'm saying they must have done it. That's just as ridiculous. I really don't know. That's like, when you're talking about voting, you're talking about how many millions of people are voting and all this information is coming in and they got to sort it out. You're going to have some mistakes. There's no way around it. But the question is, does it overall balance out or are the mistakes all for one side? If you find out the mistakes are all for Biden, then you're going to go, huh, really? Well, who, who owns the company that makes the machines? And then who, how are they financed? And who programmed that? And how are they programmed? Is it possible to fuck with the data? It is possible. Can you show me how to do it? You can do it. You we, can but the, so saying but anything time, about the vote, everybody wants to know exactly what happened. I think there's yeah, but very I know, few people that know exactly what happened. I know, I know the machines and all that type of shit, but when they take the machines away and they say, okay, we're counting these hand by hand, the, the, the results of that have to be official. Yeah, well, they definitely like that, should be. I mean, I understand like the machines, but they was like, these mail-in motherfuckers, was, they, they had to fucking count every vote. Yeah, it's a matter of how they're recording it, right? You yeah. would want to make sure that everybody recorded it accurately. I don't know how they do it. But I would imagine that when I, when I was talking to a guy like Mike Baker, and who's saying that even if there was fraud, there's not enough fraud to overturn it. I would imagine he knows some things. Yeah. I don't. I'm a moron. So me I talking about he won, we all do that. You know, we talk about he won, she won, and there's no way there was fraud or it was definitely fraud or I think Trump won by a landslide. Like people get, they get real um, connected. A, they get real connected to who's who's winning or losing this election. And I get it. I man, get I'm going to miss Donald Trump, son. Yo, I like He's not going anywhere, man. TV, man, I'm going to miss him on TV. This motherfucker's TV persona is You know what sucks? What sucks that it's His even... His TV persona is like, he's a TV motherfucker. It sucks that it's even possible that someone could monkey with an, an election to the point where you, you change the outcome. It sucks that that's even a thought that we could get into our head. That's what's... One of the crazy things about people, we're so nuts but that, was that if we believe in a side, like people that are good people will do some shady shit to have their candidate win. Yeah. For sure. That's politics. We're so crazy. That's politics. Anything goes. Anything goes. Yeah. So what, what bothers me, and I do think that Biden won the election, and I do think, that, I mean, I think there's probably some shenanigans, but I think the result is most likely correct. But it bothers me that there's even a question. It bothers me that anyone would ever think that anyone... Could f but I think that there's Republicans that think Democrats could do it, and I think there's Democrats that think Republicans can do it. And I think it's, it's going to be real hard to 100% trust the election. That's one of the things that's kind of dangerous about someone going after it. This election is rigged. This election is rigged. When Trump is doing that, he's encouraging people. And, you know, maybe that's a good thing if they are rigged. 
because maybe they're going to be able to figure out how to stop that from happening in the future, right. or maybe it's going to erode, to. or maybe it's going to erode people's confidence in the elections. And the more he does it, the more it erodes, and the more it gets dangerous. There's a real argument for that too. But listen again, I'm I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, man. It's just. I know it's nuts. It's it nuts just, that you would anybody would ever think there'd be any voter fraud on either side. But we know that people have done it. Like that's apparently how they got JFK in. Wasn't there like some crazy yeah. conspiracy about the, the mob rigged votes for JFK and that's how he became? Wasn't that a, a thing, Jamie? Yeah, <clears throat> I've heard. Has that ever been proven? I've, I've heard talks about recently that they were in such odds with each other that they would never have helped him. I think the, he was end. really at odds with them afterwards because he didn't. They, like there was the, the 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 thought was that was one of the reasons why he was assassinated. That he kind of doubled back on his agreement with the mob. The explanation the, I heard they were just helping uh, local politicians. Not oh, he didn't the trade the streets to the president. Well, his family were drug runners. The Kennedys were moonshiners. Right. They, they made their money selling bootleg liquor during during the time where it was illegal. They were basically drug dealers. And then they became this gigantic political it. dynasty. They were the Trump No, not the Trump family, but they motherfuckers. No, they were more gangster than the Trump family, really, because their, their literal background was in drug running. Like, bootleg liquor, like moonshine like is drugs. Get, we, That's drug running. You just don't think of it now because alcohol is deal. legal. Big deal. They were drug runners. Yeah. And who had the shit? Who connected the to the mob. And they were connected to the mob. Like you don't think they fucked with some numbers? You don't. You don't think there was Yo, some corruption? Who, who has the fucking money? I think there's an assumption too that both sides are going to try to do it. I mean, that was why that was uh, man, a Watergate, right? The, the, the results of this election, man, it's going to be interesting to see. Can 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 Biden work with two parties, both parties? I hope so. I hope they. I, be, I hope they prove like the the polarization of people that are opposed to uh, Trump being in office, and now that they're not Republicans and Democrats, I hope they work together. Yeah, man. That's what I hope. That's what yep. I hope. I hope they work together. Do it fast, too, because Biden has not got, like, a lot of time. You got to get used to President Kamala. That's what you got to get used to. I said it, man. That's She's going to be setup. the first. Pre it's, I, I said it. That's the position. I don't see how he can do eight years. So what if the economy is going think strong gonna, in four? I think four he's going to keep it moving, man. Who knows, it's man? It's a setup. I said it on stage. I said, get ready for your first female black president because this is the setup for her. She certainly could win. They're grooming it. She, could, she certainly could take over, too, if he dies or if he, if he can't medically continue anymore. But here's another thing you got to think of. They're doing shit to people. That they're doing some wild shit in terms of medicine and regenerative medicine and stem cells. and They just hook him up to stem cells every day. Really? And shoot him up with NAD and vitamin fees and steroids and growth hormone. You never know. They might keep that motherfucker around for a long time. How Joseph Kennedy made his fortune. Hint, it was bootlegging. No, this says wasn't bootlegging. Uh -huh. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, I can't see the end because yeah. of the white shirt. According to this oh. biographer, that is a rumor that started in the 60s and 70s when they're trying to figure out who killed JFK and maybe it was the mafia because me they were in that business. That sounds like the Kennedy family is trying to cover up their dirty tracks. It could uh, be. It's a rumor. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody be. has is a rumor about you bootlegging ever? No, I'm, no. I'm just I was looking cuz I've heard that too, but like it <laughs> well, how right away says okay. it's like in the stock market That's, and that well that maybe maybe bootlegging too. Let's try another source. Let's see uh Joseph Kennedy was a bootlegger. Type that in. I, what? Uh, well, that story is going to come here. The Daily Beast, the myth of Joe, Joe Kennedy's bootlegging. Oh, so it so is like, a myth. I don't know where I would find the correct story to, you know. Mm, I know, right? Like, how do you know who's telling the truth and whether or not it's a his big old historical cover-up? Like, if you were bootlegging, how much information would there be about you being a bootlegger? Unless you got arrested for it. For me... I think cops were probably in on bootlegging back then, don't you think? Everybody that could make they money was involved with sure. it. Sure. Everybody, what is my piece? What Why is my piece? Why wouldn't you? you prob they probably it, were angry that the bars were closed, too. They, and then they wanted a couple bottles. Give me a couple bottles, a couple imagine, hundred dollars, and so you can do whatever you want to do. Do you imagine if that's how we lived right now, if booze was illegal? Imagine as much as people drink, if you had to do it all secret. You had to like have a, a big dude by the door. You had to have a password to get in. You're always worried about getting raided by the cops. Just so you could have a drink. But people would do it. They did it. They did it for years. They made organized crime. That's where like Al Capone made all of his money. Off that's 
That's uh, yeah, that's the argument that's going on right now with um with the Mexican cartels. Like the reason why they're able to make so much money is because all that stuff's illegal and they're right. consuming it in the United States. So you're playing a stupid game. You're pretending people aren't taking it when they are. You're making it illegal because you said they shouldn't do it. But you want to control it. At but the end of the day, meanwhile, you you're just empowering organized crime. And that's what they did with organized crime in Chicago. That's what they did with organized crime in a lot of areas of this country where they had And that's why they probably layers. wanted to position people that they had influence over to be, yes, be politicians. For sure. They had so much money. And back yeah. then, there was no internet. Nobody knew what was in your bank account or where it came. Bro, shut that ding off. Jesus No, I was Christ. checking. I didn't know. Hold on a second. Sorry, man. Dude, put it, put that shit on airplane mode. What are you doing? Okay. Do you know how to shut off the ding, though? Come on, man. Stop disrespecting but me, But you've man. done it a few times. I don't understand why it keeps dinging. It won't ding again, man. All right. I'm sorry, man. So oh, Donnell. <laughs> Donnell. See, oh, you can't say shit now. You don't even know how to non-ding your phone. I would turn this bitch shut, off, Just shut the fucking ringer off, man. I did. You gotta it was flip still it up. No, you got to flip it up oh. towards you. You're you're keeping it down, which it's is off, the, man. Okay, I it's gonna ding that. again. I'm sorry, man. It's gonna ding from that beyond the grave. Maggie is down here, <laughs> knocking the fuck out. She's adorable, man. Um, man, what, what were we just talking about? I don't know. Do you remember Jamie? Kennedy oh, Kennedy's done. being a bootlegger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bootlegger. Maybe you not. were. I might be full of shit. Uh, but we didn't know you for we sure. Kind of validated the story, but it was like there was just a rumor. I don't know how it started. Right, for sure. There's a lot of organized crime money and fucking bootlegging. That's a fact. I'm on antibiotics because I got shot. Yeah, you can't drink for how long? Like three more days, son. Refreshing though. Give your body a little bit of a break. It is, but I'm. It you is. Miss it. You're looking forward. Nah, no, to not missing now. it. You know what I'm saying? Like after a show, a little shot. Right. But, yeah. You know, I just got this for all the people that's been in the streets and got shot. Got to get better. Are you um, nervous for the country right now? Are you nervous about the future? No. Not at all? No? I believe that we're always going to find solutions to stuff. Like the first thing, like you mentioned about people that need to work or whatever, the first thing that's going to happen is there's going to be some type of stimulus package approved. Motherfuckers going to feel somewhat security or a little better if they have some money to be able to do something. But this is just something that, this is just something that we're going to get past. It's just a, it's a matter of time. And with the vaccine being on board, with them having more ways to test somebody in a faster manner that don't cost as much, I think it's going to change people's attitude, the way they feel about certain things, and things will start turning around. I hope you're right. Um, my concern really is about how, how hard it's going to be to turn around the economy with that many people out of work. That's what my, my worry is. So many people are going to be broke and so many people are going to lose their houses and so many people are going to get evicted. I just don't know how they stop that and turn that around when all these jobs are gone because all these businesses went under. That's what scares me. Right. It's like that this wasn't anticipated. That I, th I think there would have been another way to do it. You know, They yeah, certainly didn't you... lock down as much out here. Not nearly as much. And then that's a good point because, that, I mean, like, whatever you worked for, whatever just could be pulled from under you just like that's that. That's the thing about, like, you can't say that the people that are upset today are soy boys. They can't say that they're all pussies because there's a lot of people that are upset through no fault of their own. They lost everything, right? You could be the most disciplined guy in the world. You get up early every day. You work hard all day. You, you build a business. And then all of a sudden, COVID comes around and you find out your margins are a lot smaller than you thought. Well, nobody expected it to go eight, nine months, right? So you're not making any money for eight, nine months, right. and you can't reopen? There's a lot of businesses like that. There's a lot of it's bars. Lot of there's, a lot of, there's a lot of There's bailouts. not enough bailouts. There's so many businesses. There's not enough. And they're not going to give it to all. They're not going to give you all you lost. You're going to lose a tremendous amount no matter what. Well, it was a lot of people getting that money that was bullshit. Boy, it was so yeah. much goddamn fucking scandal with them PBA loans and shit, man. Everybody was grabbing them bitches. You know, They'll find money, then you got to pay it back. I hope we figure out a way to make this uh, make this economy bounce back. And I'm, but I say we. When I say we, I mean people way smarter than me. I hope. I hope somebody figures it out. I hope but, that my son had the best life he can have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope so too. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that it's gonna get. You're gonna just start. People gonna be concerned about people that are close to them and their family. And how that situation is going. 
Yeah. I mean, everybody hopes that the next person that gets in office is going to nail it. Everybody hopes the next person that gets in office is going to fix all our problems. We got to change the way we communicate with each other. That's a big, that's a big one. Everybody's locked in this trap of uh, us versus them, of red versus blue, of like what, whatever the, the trap is, like whatever your particular trap is. There's men versus women traps. There's uh, people get crazy with being tribal and being on a fucking team. We're supposed to be one team, We're supposed to be the United States of America. If we differ on small things like immigration or um, things like um, financial issues or how to use uh, taxes, and the most important thing is that we all want what's best for the country. We all want the country to do well. You want to think people. You want. Yeah. That's the. That's how you want people to feel. That's what drove me the most crazy about Trump being president. I felt like it was the first time I can ever remember where people wanted things to be bad so that he would be a bad president. So that, I mean, I guess they probably did with Obama too. They wanted things to go bad so that they could blame it on him. Like they would rather have something to blame on him than to have everything go well. Like if you asked a hardcore Trump hater, would you rather, this would be a good question, would you rather the economy become the greatest economy the world has ever known? And you'd be totally wrong. And Trump, even though he, he's a pussy grabber and he's full of shit and he brags about himself, became literally the best person to make the decisions that were the best for the country. Or would you rather the economy fall to the toilet and Trump goes to jail? You're like, Trump goes to jail! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no bargain. Yeah, I know. He would immediately... There would be no hesitation. Put him in jail. Fuck him. Everything's fine. Everything's That's fine. That sounds like a relationship. <laughs> Whatever a makes bit. you happy, you like, fuck that. I don't want him to be happy. Well, they definitely didn't want him to do well, which is weird. Like, they wanted him to get arrested and then the economy to bounce back. That's what they and wanted. A part of they, but another thing they wanted to, Joe, they wanted um, to feel like uh, you cared about them. They wanted to feel like... You cared about something yeah. or somebody else other than your fan base. That was a big part of it, man. People didn't, I don't think people were just looking for reasons to hate on him. And I know some people that like, liked him. Some people love it. Some people love to know nonsense. Yeah. Fuck it. People love a guy who came along and said, fuck you to politically correct shit yeah. too. There's a lot that people liked about him. People liked the idea that he got fucked over in this election too. They liked the idea that the deep state was involved and that people were uh, rigging voting machines and miscounting votes and people love those stories. I do not know if those stories are true. I don't give a fuck about those stories. They're, they're a bummer though. It's a bummer that there's those stories. This would be the ideal scenario. Whoever won, won. If it's Biden and Kamala, they win and then that's it. They transfer a power, a shake of hands. People do what they've always done, what Obama did with they Trump. They don't want to do that, son. They don't want to do that. That's so corny. You don't want to shake a motherfucker hand. You don't want to give up the secrets. You don't give up the keys. He's got to do it. You don't want to give up the cars. But he's got to do it, especially Yo. if he wants to run again. See, if Trump wants to do it again, he can run one more time in 2024. But the only way he's going to be able to do that, he's got to be able to sit down and shake Biden's hand and say, I'll see you in four years, bitch. It's got to be. You can't. Said that. You can't just keep saying that the voting is a hundred percent rigged, and I won this election by a lot, and all that's fucking dangerous because it's just dangerous for our confidence. It's dangerous. You got people talking about rise up. You're gonna. It's gonna be something. Something's gonna. Dude, happen. don't say that. Here's the thing. I. You gotta show the evidence first. You gotta show the evidence first. There, there has to be like you have to compile all that evidence. If there really is that evidence, you gotta compile it all and present it in a you very tried solid it, way. Shut down. Yeah, it's oh, um, it. it's not. I mean, it's above our pay grade. Do you see, even understand national politics on that scale? But I think that uh, as a country, I think you and I both know that this country's. Ne we, this is like it's never been in a position where you don't know what the hell's gonna happen. You never know. Like with, you never know. There's, there's so much turmoil and weirdness, and you never know. What is there going to be another wave of this pandemic? Are they going to shut everything down again? Whatever what happens is, then? Whatever happens then, we go with, with, with what has become our new norm. We go back to that. You know what I'm saying? Like things are about to shift. By the spring or the summer, things are going to be in a totally different place in regard to how people feel about 
being in public, again, they're going to have this, they're going to come up with some super rapid testing situation. I hope that's so. That's going to make the fucking um, essential workers, people in the medical field, feel more comfortable. They're going to make other people feel comfortable. And eventually, like, people are going to make decisions. Am I going to fuck with this I vaccine? So. Or what am I going to do to... To, to live. I hope the vaccine and you know that the election gets resolved quickly. It's, Jamie, Jamie resolved. if you had a guess, if you had a, no, I know, but I mean, let them let Trump say it's resolved. If you had a guess, what percentage of uh, election fraud do you oh, think there was? I don't know. Guess. Take a guess. It's not zero, right? Probably not zero, but it's like one two percent, like the normal polled. Uh, I think plus it's really one one percent. I know it's a lot, but I mean, there's 150 million votes. So I don't that, think like, it's. I don't think it's million. one. I guess that's a lot. I don't think it's yeah, one, but I think it's. I think there's a some less than zero number, or some more than zero number rather that is uh, voter fraud. I think that any reasonable it's person. It's a point. One of those points. Yeah, it's not, and who knows which way it goes? Because I bet there's voter fraud the other way too. There's, we're not hearing about that because Biden won. But if Biden was like Trump and he lost that race, who knows? He might, they might try to figure out a way that the Republicans cheated. I don't know, man. Yo, I'm going to tell you, this shit has turned into comedy, son. What's turned into comedy? This whole just not quitting. just <laughs> It's kind of crazy. No, it's... Every inter- day he's tweeting no, about it. No, it's not even crazy. It's entertaining. See, it's entertaining. I know it's unfortunate for me entertainment, but it's entertaining. I get that it's entertaining. But it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous when you, you start thinking that there's people out there that think that um, that there's been a coup, right? Or that Trump is attempting a coup. There's like two different schools of thought. One school of thought is the deep state took over the election and they, they, they rigged it. And the other school of thought is this guy is trying to win even though he lost. And he's trying to figure out a way to sue his way back into the White House. And this is crazy. So there's... Please? Go ahead. Yeah. So there's... Uh, that's the problem is that there's not a, well, he's not a smooth win on transition. One, one end because he's got the power of the people. Like again, those that, him losing the support that he has, he knows that there's a community. He can they're gonna be fucking still on his dick right now because he can shake some shit up. Yeah. So fuck him, fuck all of them. Am I ever gonna get some elk? Do you have any elk today? I have it at my house. Yeah. You can't cook it though, right? I can cook it. We we'll have to figure out how much time we have between now and the show. Yo, you could bring some elk to the show, son. Not enough for everybody. No, just a sample. Yeah, why don't you just come over to my house? I'll cook for you. What time do we have? I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get out of here. Let's figure it out off the air, though. But my two lesbian friends are supposed to meet me, son. <laughs> They're not like no, like no menage a trois lesbians. They're just like regular lesbians. They're my friends. Okay, that's cool. They're yeah. Who do they think won? Biden, <laughs> what? <laughs> Hell, man, what? I said my two lesbian friends with Imagine their adopted, lesbians with for their Trump. adopted Mexican son Eli, who I fucking love. You don't think this, there's lesbians for Trump? I bet there's a whole website. I don't. You know what? I never thought about that. I don't think there's too many lesbians for Trump. I bet there's a few. I bet they get together and like, yeah, you know, like people. Are I don't things. know. I yeah. don't think that. That's never. That's just I never thought about. You know, like lesbians people, for Trump. Some people are really into anime. There's a T-shirt for it. There you. goes, lesbian for Trump. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but you would assume that if someone's a lesbian, that's what I was kind of getting at. That you would instantly know who they're voting for, right? I mean, I know that's kind of profiling, but I was definitely like short haircut. <laughs> You know, short haircut, yeah. fucking man cut out suit with the butt, the tie. Right. Like, yep. how many girls with blue hair or pink hair voted for Trump? Is it less than zero? That's a good stat. Yeah. <clears throat> Trump pride gay Republicans on why they're backing the president. Because they, be dre- because they get to dress up again. Well, again, having a good time. It's a cool outfit. It's uh, such a weird time, man. Such a weird time. But I'm ready to just get on the river, bro. I get it. I'm ready nature. to just get into some nature. Do you think you're going to move there? Would you move there? I think so. It's a good place to be. I think the community, I mean, it's just like the sense of community, man, this summer. And it was just so simple. Would you um, Would you get rid of your place in L.A. and just settle down yeah, there? Yeah, I could do that. I could yeah. do it. I could do it. Better for travel, really. If you wanted to go left or right, you're more the closer to the middle. nature is just better for everything, man. Right. I just want to be around some trees. 
I think that's one good thing about people that can escape from LA. There's a lot of people that are escaping from New York as well, and they're moving to the the suburbs, and they're they're liking it better. They're more relaxed. They're get some space. People, want, people are, are like instead of being in the chaos. Yeah, I can drive to the chaos. Yeah, you know it's like fucking people from or not even drive now. A lot of people are working from home. Do like, you don't think it's going to change? I think there's going to be a lot of companies that realize like, hey, I don't need this gigantic space to handle all these people. I can let people work from home. They're more productive because a lot of times, people in offices they get together, they talk, they have fun. You know, there's the a break lot of room, work. The green. Oh yeah. man, I used to fucking be yes. in the fucking break room. Yes. I never was doing work. Always I've seen in the dudes, break room. I've seen dudes in cubicles doing this shit, where the cubicles here, and they're both on the outside, they're just having a conversation. They're nowhere near their computer. People do that all the time. If no one's watching, people do that all the time. In some jobs. Yo, they don't, don't get back. don't get personal if it's you. <laughs> Scooting you back from hard. the cubicle. That's hilarious. There's a lot of dudes that are working all all over the place that would be more productive if they just had a certain amount of work to do and they could just get it done at home. You know, but sometimes they want to patrol. I think it's a good idea. There's a lot of people that have jobs. You have to be there, right? Auto mechanic. A lot of people fill in the blank. Carpenter. A lot of people have jobs. Got to be there. But there's certain jobs, like why? Why Carpenter. do you need? Yeah. Why do you need to sit through an hour and 15 minutes of traffic when you could just do it through Zoom and you just sit here in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and get all your fucking work done? Like what? Why do you? Why do you need to go somewhere? You don't. With computers wanna, today, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go anywhere. They just want to control the movements of it. They just want to... It's, it makes sense. And I think it's going to go to that. Everybody's like, I'm working from home, I'm working from home, and they're getting the, getting the job done. Yeah. Everything is different. A lot of people are going to be able to stay home. And so I think that's just going to change the nature of cities in general. Less people are going to have to commute to them. But that's one probably good thing about this is that people are going to not have to commute as much so maybe the roads won't be as jammed up. If that that saves people so much fucking stress. If you're a dude who works in Orange County and you live in LA and you got to make that drive every morning. You ever see that fucking drive? That I've drive come is from that insane. Drive. I've come from that drive. I've been going the other way of that drive. When you go Orange County to LA at 7 a.m., you want to just fucking end it. You just you just like I can't do this every day. But you can do it for a minute because that's the route that I, because I, um, my count is out in Orange County, and I did that trip a couple of times, and I kind of enjoy being up in the, in the morning with it, because I don't have to do, I didn't do it have to. Because you don't time, have to do it like, every day. If you had a job and you had to be yeah. at your job at eight thirty in the morning every day, and you live in Orange County, you got to go to L.A. You got to leave your house before seven. Yeah. You're going to accept the fact that every morning there's a likelihood, a high likelihood, it's going to take you an hour and a half. Or you could go on Zoom. Or you can go on Zoom. I'm going on Zoom. Yeah, and you can wake up, instead of waking up at 6, you wake up at 8. You wake up at 8, have a cup of coffee, sit down, turn on your fucking computer. I get up you can early eat a little now, bit Joe, of toast. I got, a, I, got, I got Maggie. I understand. Maggie has Yeah, I got to get up early. I'm not like, the old the old Donnell is gone, Joe. I get it. Like, she's down there curled up. I'm just happy that there's alternatives for some people where they at least can work if they can't be in an office at least they can do some stuff on zoom but for other people man that's what i was that's what i'm worried about what i'm worried about is Why everything you, restarting like how does man how joe, does take? joe 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 Donald, joe joe Donald, Donald. i know you're worried about it and you have concerns and everybody worried about it have concerns but if it's just like this yo what the fuck are you gonna do you gotta figure it out People are going to have to figure it out. Yeah, man. It's like, I understand. You keep saying, yeah, man. Then I feel sorry for them. <sighs> sorry. Eventually, you're going to have to figure it the fuck out. Eventually, nobody's going to be able to help you. Nobody's going to be able to vouch for you. And you got to do it your fucking self. Dave, David Goggins said it, man. It goes back to that same point, man. They're looking for answers. You are the answer. You got... Two excuses, a good one and a bad one. At the end of the day, it's the same fucking excuse. I've said it before, and I know people are like, well, it's easy for you to say. It's not easy for anybody to say. Whatever's going to happen moving on forward, it's not easy for anybody to say. Everybody's going to have their opinion of it. Everybody's going to be on the opinion of, well, give him a chance. Maybe he could bring the world back together. It's going to be a lot of Trump motherfuckers like, yo, fuck you, asshole. There's been no supporter that's been angrier than a Trump supporter. 
to the extent that there's sore winners and sore losers. You got to pick a sore. <laughs> you can't just take both sores. You see, the thing is, they think they got robbed. That's why his treat tweets are dangerous. And even if you do, Joe, yeah. even if you do, have you feel this is the part that's fucked up? Is this mine? Have some. Yeah. This is the part that's fucked it's up. Been sitting here for a while. Probably not hot anymore. What was I saying, son? This is the part that's fucked up about being sore winners and sore losers. You got to pick a sore. You got to pick a sore. And everything is not going to always go your way. But you don't have to be upset about See, it. See, the thing is, though, what he's saying to them is it was a robbery. So he thinks starting it's a robbery. Shit, man. It's it, definitely like, starting shit. That's, you got it. That's it right there. Yo, why all your shit got to be extra strong, man? This is I like too sturdy big things. for a fucking teapot. It's coffee. A coffee pot. Damn, It just keeps son. the coffee warm after you're done. I feel like I'm on a yard. Like, Everything is like a workout. What's that? Does he want to come in? Who out there? Dave's out there. Tell that nigga to come in, son. Yeah, tell him to come on in. Come on. Do we have a camera for him? <clears throat> Did he get his test results? Uh, maybe that's what he was waiting on. I don't but know. he gets tested every day, doesn't he? Maggie just jumped up. Have you ever seen a, a baby dog, little tiny little dog? I've never seen a, a tiny little dog. I had one. Oh, I used no, to have one. It wasn't quite that small, but it was pretty small. I've seen little dogs. I've just never seen one in the baby form. Squaw. David! What's happening, bro? What's up? How are you? What's happening? Oh, no! What's up? Oh, yeah. What's going on? You want to sit right here, son? What's up? Oh, no! Get in here! What's up? Oh, I can see you, too. Oh, God. What's she smoking on? Oh, shit. Michelle Wolf? This joint right here. Come on in the here. The whole circus is in town. <laughs> I don't know how many microphones we have, yeah, unfortunately. Do you have a joint? Yeah, it smells really good. Yeah, I was smoking this. It's really good. Marijuana is I mean, semi-legal here. How was this with the... Well, I'm a semi-criminal. Let me get some. My guy. Is there a, um... Is there any coffee? Yeah, yep. yeah this is coffee. Joint. Did you have start smoking? Oh, What's up, man? What are you doing? Oh, bro. <laughs> Living the dream. Good to see you. How's Austin been treating you? Uh, great. We did two nights uh, at Stubbs. Stubbs Barbecue, the guy from the barbecue sauce. So he has a like a stage? Like, it's an outdoor. You never been there? It's no. an outdoor event. You, no. Joe, you will love I this place. I thought they said you was there. So, no, they said you was somewhere else. I went to the Vulcan Gas Company. That's the only place I've been in town. Michelle is doing that. Oh, it's that's great. The, that's the gig she's got coming up. Yeah, because Cap City's gone, so people are doing shows anywhere they can. Are you gonna Are you gonna buy a club here? Yes. Oh, you got to. Yes. I'll be the first gig. All right. You heard it here, folks. gonna <laughs> be? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I have to. It's like as soon as Cap City went under, I was like, oh shit. Oh, now I have to. But I I don't know what's gonna happen after Biden gets into office. Whether there's gonna be another lockdown, like a national lockdown for a while. So I'll wait until after that blows over. Yeah, I just keep moving forward. That's all. Yeah. I, you know what I mean. Like everything that I've seen you do, moving here to Austin, and it's, it's gangsters. Correct. <laughs> Thanks, we, man. We, we find a way. Yeah, we find a way. We were just talking about that. People find a way. I was saying, like, what are people gonna do? You know, with restarting the economy and you know the, trying to get a job when all these businesses went under. Like, how does everything go? And Don, I was just saying, we do what we have to do. We figure it out. That's true. I'm far from an economist, but I will say that the, the planning for your future is a good thing. It's a necessary yes. thing. Even even though it's uncertain, you have to remember the sun does rise every morning. Yeah. So just keep moving. And people that are in this shit right now never thought that it was going to happen. Now that they know that this is a possibility, now we have to plan for the future for the future. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Never. You know, you've never seen something as large as the American economy stop and then start back up. But it's a global phenomenon. It's like it's it's not like it's just happening to us. We're just <laughs> handling it terribly. I like how you handled it though. I like doing those shows <clears throat> that you oh. did in Yellow Springs. It's a great idea. It was wonderful. We doing it in that chapel, that whole area outside. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. a pavilion, all <laughs> outdoors. I talked to my doctor, my my family practitioner, and he told me you should play outdoors. If you play indoors, use UV air filters, you know, like the specs of a building that might be safer. Many buildings now today are not outfitted this way. And and 
you know, you hope for the best. You take every necessary precaution, reasonable pr- precaution, and and but it's a pandemic. There's no guarantees. Are you getting any people giving you shit about doing shows? No. No? no. Nothing? I mean, and even if I did, you know what I mean? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and mm. that's it. Mm. There's nothing you can do about it. No, no matter what, you know, yeah. uh, read about Jesus, seemed to be a really good guy. They killed him. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the nature of people. <laughs> Donnell, this dog is hilarious. Man, this dog is a an angel. This dog makes everybody feel good, man. She's so cute. I've never seen a little dog as a baby. I've only seen them as full grown little she dogs. Likes this this is gonna be her size right here. That's how she's gonna stay? Yeah, she gonna stay like this with a little bit more bark and more <coughs> Now how is it traveling with it? Is it do Easy, you like it son. more or the company, I mean? What it's is- dope. Like I'm like, when I got her, I was like this, oh, she's an emotional dog, right? But now that I got her, I'm like this, yeah, I'm a, an emotional human. Oh. And like, oh, like, guy. yo, <laughs> let me tell you something, son. Sometimes I'll be up at 530, and she'll be up her ears and be up looking like, what we doing, nigga? And I'm like, at least somebody understands me, right? It increases the amount of love you have, yeah. right? Because you then, have this dog. And she follows me everywhere. Yeah. Well, I was at the show the other night. I was on stage and they said she was shaking, barking when she heard my voice. Yeah, it's crazy. She was. <laughs> she was like, ar, 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 where you at, motherfucker? Oh, she loves you. Yeah, yeah, it's a different world, man. You got a little dog that counts on you like that. Those are different kinds of dogs, too. They're so little, they have to be held. You need to carry them most of the time. Is she scared or cold? Like, why is she shaking? She might be a little combination of both. So. <laughs> she, maybe she oh. needs a drink. Maybe she has to piss. <laughs> nah, She's five sir. months old. How is she keeping it together? Don't talk about her like that. She good, <laughs> son. She probably just need a little warmth. Do you have Do you have dogs? Yeah, How many? I have one dog. You probably have a, a huge wolf kind of dog. No, I have a golden retriever. <laughs> I, I have the sweetest dog in the world. He's the nicest dog that ever. That dog looks perfect. He's so nice. That dog looks like he has a great life. He's just a love sponge. Like that dog is just all about love. It's all he wants to do is like kiss you and let you pet him. And who spends the most time with your dog? Me. Probably. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I spend a lot of time with him. We yeah. have a morning ritual. What's the ritual? I just get up in the morning. As soon as I see him, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. And he starts freaking out. Oh, oh, oh. And he go for a walk? Wags his tail. Go for a yeah, walk? Well, yeah, he does that, but he loves chasing balls more than anything. He's a great guy. He likes swimming. Balls. Chasing balls. I, did, <laughs> I, I didn't. Thank you, sir. There you go. No, he's a sweet dog. You got a dog? Uh, f- uh, Three of them. What kind? Uh, Australian Shepherd. And uh, one kind of like this, what they call it, a, a chawini, I think they call it. <laughs> it's half chihuahua, half one of those hot dogs. That's the one Baba. Remember the one in my special, Baba? That's him. A chawini. <laughs> he half this and half hot dog. And then uh, my my uh, daughter has a little uh, a little dog like this. Not a, not a chihuahua. I can't remember what kind of dog she is. My daughter has a chihuahua mix. It's like a chihuahua with like, I think he's got some whippet or something in him. So it's a chihuahua with long legs. He's adorable. You know, I always wanted I wanted my kids to train animals when they were little. Really? That's one of these things I should have followed through on. But the reason I did it is because I wanted to learn how to be patient with other with people. And I figured if they train a dog or something, it takes patience. Look at look, this dog is adorable, but she don't know nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, she don't know shit. <laughs> she she knows it. snacks. The real problem is when you get dogs that need a lot of training. Like if you want to have a German Shepherd or a working dog, like a, a Belgian Malinois. A lot of people get those dogs. You don't realize, like you 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 basically got like a little genius with teeth that lives with you that wants to figure figure out problems. You know those like uh, have you heard of those celebrity? Uh, like the German Shepherds, the guard dogs, the real yeah. ones with that no two hundred commands. And yeah, do- Schutzen training. Yeah, yeah. That's what they call oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen guys do that. that Some comedian that shit. got one of those dogs, spent like two hundred grand on it, and it died in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> those are crazy. If you can have a dog like that, that's a commitment, man. Like those dogs need work. That's what I'm the saying. The ones they're, you got to bark German so, and shit. Those dogs yeah, yeah. are so smart. They're from a long history of working dogs. Those are task-oriented <laughs> dogs. Come this in. dog's from a, a long in. history of some Isn't being she cold. adorable? Come on, Maggie. She is. Come here. 
she doesn't want to be held back, bro. Have you ever taken your dog hunting? No. You can't do that, right? No, not too, my dog. It's too dangerous for a dog. Well, you wouldn't want him to be in the woods, first of all, because you'd probably scare off the animals. But second of all, he has like the instincts to chase squirrels and shit. <laughs> he chases squirrels, but he's like a, he's a lover. Mm. He's not, he's, there's no aggression in him. Like with other dogs, like he's always the beta. He's always, uh, he's, he tries to be the alpha, but they, they bark at him. He's like, sorry, sorry. The, <laughs> the Australian Shepherd's like that. She's, well, she's like, she's like the dog you described that needs work. Mm. Like you can tell she's a herder. She corrals kids. She corrals me. Mm. And uh, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. They have it in their DNA. They really I've seen do. that. They really do. It's uh, And the dog is really smart. I never trained this dog, but you, you would think I had. I just talked to it. And you could see her face trying to figure out what I'm talking about. It's really cool. <laughs> they do think. I think he's doing something with the dog. They went out to beat his dog. They do figure out words. Like it's not just commands. Like my dog knows. You hungry, man? You want to eat? Like he knows. Oh wow! He knows when I say you hungry. What do you want to do, dude? You want to throw the ball? He's like, let's throw the fucking ball. That's dope. He'll go over by where the ball is. You got to go outside, and he'll just start walking towards the door. Like he knows a few phrases. Cause I I definitely trained him like sit and all that shit. But some dogs are just smarter than other dogs. He's a really smart dog. Uh. Yeah, man. Does he like Austin? Do you like Loves Austin? It. I love it. I love it here. What do you, what do you do? Have you like? Oh, oh Donnell, down it. with the count. I got it. Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man, I'm hey, that's sorry. actually you did a great job. You actually put it back perfect. That's <laughs> perfect. I was up? dead I'm in sorry, frame. Man. Don't worry about it, man. Damn. That's the best recovery I've ever seen from one of these stupid things. These aren't ideal. These cameras mounted on the wall. I like this setup a lot, man. Thank you. I, it feels homely. You actually just tricked me into doing the podcast. Sorry. That's good. Mm -hmm. I, no, I, I'm, I'm going to come and do it like for real, for real. For so, real, for real. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I should come after the inauguration. Okay. Let's do it. I'll come after the inauguration. That sounds great. Nobody believe I got shot, son. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Dave, I don't know what's going on, man, but everywhere I go. Don't eat on the air. Man. Why? I can't eat over here? No, you're going to crunch on the air? Where? You're crunching in the microphone. You're eating. Come on, man. <laughs> it's yo, he said he was gonna bring up yo son. He said that he was gonna bring enough help for me and you. I would totally do that. Is is it good? Have, yes. Have you had I it? I tried before? to tell him about it. Yeah, it's good. So what do you do? You make jerky. You barbecue it. I just put it on a grill. I usually uh, I put it on a, a, a you know what a Traeger grill is? No. It's a pellet grill. So it just has like little wood pellets they make with sawdust. They I've compress seen those, yeah. the sawdust and these pellets they pour it into the machine. So it's basically just fire and wood. So it's like keep it at a low temperature, control it like 265 till it hits 120 degrees internal temperature. Damn. Then I pull it and then I sear the outside one of two ways. Either I do it in a cast iron frying pan with beef tallow, which is rendered beef fat. Oh, wow. Or I do it. I have a grill. I could do it outside on the, another kind of grill. Usually I like to do it in the cast iron frying pan. You heard it here first. Joe Rogan doesn't just like killing animals. He likes cooking them, too. Yo, like Dave, it. and then he always has a perfect, he got this perfect little chopping block he put him on. I like and it. And he always throw the jalapenos on his side, right? And it's just, you see this perfectly seared meat. And then the knife is like a Japanese, some extra shit. <laughs> <laughs> then you see a little blood and did a little jalapenos and he's showing off, son. Oh, <laughs> Do you cook it all, Dave? Yeah, not not anything like you guys. Donnell can cook. That's all I, I hear. I couldn't believe it. He challenged me. I right. I thought he was joking. He's like, I'm gonna cook for all these people. I, I literally thought he was joking. I said, he can't cook. He's like, what? He, like he was offended. <laughs> so he makes me take him to a grocery store. This is in Ohio. <laughs> And I, I was laughing the whole time until he started shopping. He goes to the lady, do you have clam juice? I said, clam, I was like, clam juice? He started asking for all these fucking ingredients. Killed it. Cooked for like 20 of my friends in Ohio. And then went and did a show. It was amazing. And then I made him apologize to me. He was like, you did a good job. I was like, no, motherfucker. You got to do it on stage. You said you was going to promise on stage. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I'm saying it on the podcast. You were, it yeah. was amazing. No, I made him say it. I was like, he was like, yeah, Donnie. I was like, nah, nigga, what the fuck did you say? How did you learn to cook? Just watching my mother cook, just watching cooking shows. But I do remember when I was younger, 
my mother was a part of Publishers Clearinghouse, and I think they had like one promotion where you get a Betty Crocker's recipe book, and it had all these recipe cards, and it just sent it to you, and it's like like meats, and then you see all these recipes, and I used to look at the recipe, I was like, man, we ain't got shit to make none of this with. <laughs> We had the recipe, we didn't have the ingredients. So I just started reading those recipe cards. When I got older, I was like, I should start just fucking with this shit I couldn't cook. And then I just started fucking around and just had, started having fun with cooking. Do you go off recipes now or do you have it oh, in your head? I go off of it 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, with cooking, it's like a technique, the uh, art of cooking. Like, an art of cooking, if you know how to cook, you can cook whatever. It just all depends on what spices or whatever, but if you're not a cook, you're not a cook. What's a specialty? I don't really have a specialty. Really? I don't have a specialty. I'll follow a recipe, somebody will do something, I'll get inspired by something. But I do know I make these garlic noodles, right? It's not a specialty, but it's a whopper. It's like a wet ass pussy dish. It's a wet ass pussy dish, son. It's no way around it. They love the garlic noodles, and I make a dope ass garlic. You can put whatever protein you want on it. But the garlic noodles are fucking crazy. In, in fact, you made those that night. I did. Yeah, you did. That was I was impressed. I had, yeah, I put. I, had I love this thing stuff. you said. The metaphor we had the recipes, just not the ingredients. That's a good metaphor for like a lot of things in life. We had the recipes, but none of the ingredients. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have it. That's a boy. That's a bar. You should write that down. Cool. Yeah. Out. Will I remember it? But this is the truth. Someone will tell you. It's true. <laughs> Just watch the podcast tomorrow. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, everyone wants equal access to the ingredients. That's right. I had the recipe. Real equality, right? But none What's of the, the ingredients. The it's difference. Part of a metaphor. That really is the difference. That's a great way to. That's a great metaphor. Yeah, it is. Yeah, for life. That's what I was telling y'all niggas, man. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he been not listening to my story the whole show, dude. I listened. He doesn't anytime believe I you. Anytime I mentioned I got shot. I believed him the first time. I believed him the second time. I believed him every time. You know Pierre Edwards? Yes. Great comedian. I, I, I saw a video today. It was on some guy's Instagram. He's a comedian. It was me introducing him at a comedy club when I was like 17. Wow. Someone just sent it to me. Out of the blue Pierre D from D.C.? Which one? Uh, yeah, Pierre from D.C. Yeah? He used to do the funniest joke about getting shot. <laughs> I'm not going to do another guy's <laughs> joke. But, you know, he got shot at, in D.C. like one night. He, oh, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> He's a funny dude. I got shot. Nobody fucking believed me, man. We believe you. Yo, are you going to bring some elk? I told you I'll cook some. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, man. I, I want to see what, what they say in the streets. What's all this fuss is about? I, I want some elk, son. <laughs> Yo, everywhere I go, motherfuckers say, did you try the elk? That's all I know what how is to cook. It, is it gamey? No, it's not gamey. It's not like, there's a f weird taste that people associate with like venison, a gamey taste. And for the most part, it's either hasn't been prepared correctly or it wasn't taken care of correctly after the animal died. Like that's for the most part what the gamey, it's a different flavor. But I think what people associate with with not tasting good, like, mm, that I think a lot of that, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it isn't just personal taste. It's bad preparation. I agree. You get a steak from a grocery store, you're assuming that professional butchers, like people that grow the cows, professional butchers, all down the line, they get you the steak. If you got a guy's deer meat, who knows how this guy took care of that <laughs> fucking deer? You know, he could have had that no shit hanging in a in tree. That bitch nowhere. No marbleization, no. no marbleization in there nowhere. Sometimes people, uh, you know, sometimes people shoot them and you See, know, this they I'm don't get about, them Dave. into the Look morning. What the fuck I'm talking about, Dave? Oh, that's good. Wow. That no, wait good, a minute. Right? That's a show well, on board. It? Exactly, yeah, Dave. Good. This is go to picture. You're not right going to shame me. You're not going to shame me. I'm not going to shame. This is yo. This is a good elk day right here, son. <laughs> it is a good elk day. Look, wait. Let what does the caption say? Watch he mentions something about a jalapeno somewhere. No, no, this no, is no. the final product. Oh shit. That's pretty, right? But what's that? A dry rub. What rub is that? That's a uh, Saskatchewan black and Saskatchewan. It's a Traeger rub. It's like a like a Cajun style almost, oh. but but it's got. It's, so wait, it's like you, a blackened, like, is, but not like it's like a, like a lot of salt to it. That it's delicious. It's it, the perfect rub. I love that rub for for elk. So wait, you, when you cook it, you you like you cut it up yourself. You know how to 
cut steaks out I, of nigga, a, Yes, oh, that's the I whole do, purpose. But that part is easy because that part is uh, what's called the back strap. That's the big, thick piece of meat that's on each side of the spine. It's Look at the knife, though, nigga. What kind of, is that a Japanese? No, that's an American knife. Who made that knife? Was it? Does it say in the caption? No. Mm-hmm. Doesn't there's no tag or nothing? No. The dude who uh, made it was shit. Dave, you wouldn't eat See if that. You, find you, that. Want, you wouldn't eat that. It's Dave. in there somewhere. Same knife, real close to so it. So if you're killing elk, how long are you eating that elk? You could eat it for a whole year. Literally a year. Yeah, they're huge. Yes, yeah, same knife here. I oh, got it. There it is. Chum, the the knife. guy gave me the knife. There it is. Let's see, Neanderthal. Oh, chumney knives. C H U M. And that knife knife look right, knives. son. That Chumney knife knives. looks it's a right. Dope, it's a dope knife. Um, yeah, you'd eat it for all year. It's hundreds of pounds of meat. It's like 400 uh, they're pounds huge. of meat. They're huge. They're huge. So, okay, say you're shooting elk. You, you're bow hunting, I'm imagining. Yeah. It, it, what happens? It runs off. You got to follow it for like a, a day or two? Or like, if, you, if you hit them right, they die pretty quick. Ow. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. He do it with a bow, though, son. Yeah. But you have to practice a lot, man. This nigga do it with a bow. It's not easy. But the point is, I know exactly where that meat's coming from. Like, uh, that, I know the whole chain of command. I know everything that's happened from the time that animal got hit until the time I'm cooking it. Oh, that's interesting. You know, because, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. I get all my meats from strangers. Yeah, <laughs> most people do. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about it. I was in Alaska once, and a lady told me that she hadn't eaten something she hadn't killed herself uh, in years. Wow. This woman looked like a Betty Crocker model, like a house mom. She was working in an ammunition store. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I had never been to a gun store before. They, it was ridiculous. This is in Fairbanks, Alaska. There was so many, like, think of a kind of gun. The guy goes, this is a sniper rifle. It can You can shoot a bear with this from two miles away. Couldn't imagine why I would shoot a bear that was two miles away. <laughs> I couldn't, that was the weirdest sales pitch. And he literally said that to me. Yeah, that's like a thousand yards, right? Isn't that, isn't two miles? Two right miles, far, way more way than, than, yeah, way more. How many thousand that. miles is a um, a, a mile? Or it's how like thousand, s- oh, 5,000 feet is a mile. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's not yards. It's close to 2,000 okay. yards. Yeah, it's crazy. So they can shoot things, they can shoot things at a thousand yards. Like, Snipers have hit sure. oh. shots Damn, at a thousand son. yards. So I, I, just think of that it number. A, it was a crazy thing to That's just so be able far. to sell to somebody. You know, I'm not going to get into all that gun stuff. But a mile is five thousand feet, mm-hmm. and then a thousand yards a bullet. That's crazy. That's so far. That's really far. <laughs> That's a long. That's a long squint. Uh, yeah, they could ten thousand feet for them is nothing. That's, that's nothing. a scope, though. That has to be a scope. Well. Well, again, this was Alaska, so you got to yeah. think things like guns there are, are more utilitarian than like you know New York or something. People yeah. do need you yeah. don't want a toolie out there, I think. Yeah, of everybody course. has guns up there. Well, they also have bears and fucking moose and shit. Yeah, it's crazy up there. It looks it looks unfinished. It's beautiful. It's a wild place. It's, it's one unspoiled. of the last real. The the people that live up there are a different kind of human. They're more. They have. They just they're they're more durable. They're not soybean eaters. No. <laughs> they have all these Al- Alaska isms. <laughs> That's they're it. Tough they, 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 they call they call they call leaving Alaska going outside. Really? Yeah, they say they, it's like a call. They say the lower forty eighth, we all heard that before. Right. Yeah. They'll call they'll call the rest of the continental US lower forty eight. Um tons of them. But it was it was fun up there, man. I had a good they're time. nice people. I've only done shows up there once. I did shows in Anchorage with Ari. We had a good fucking time. They were good people, but they're sturdy. They're like you could tell they can they survive winter. Yeah. They deal with shit that people don't have to deal with. You, the male to female ratio. The, the male to female ratio. Guys outnumber women in Alaska. I think ten to one. <laughs> ten to one. It's not many women. Awesome oh, motherfuckers are sexy as shit out there, bitch. Ten to one. Well, yeah, that's what you would think. You think, oh, if you're a woman, oh, this is great. Ten guys, you got ten dusty, dirt on the fingernail choices. These guys are rugged. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <sighs> These guys are rugged. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, like, just think of the jobs you have I was the only dude in the nail shop in Fairbanks, Alaska. <laughs> Everybody else's oh. nails and hands look like shit. Yo, you was killing it, son. <laughs> I've been mining all day. I met a guy who's a gold miner. Damn. Weird jobs like that. 
That's yeah. how I was when I was in the Air Force, when I was stationed in Kunsan, Korea. It was like 10 guys to every girl. And whoever she was, she was America's next top model. <laughs> She had the attitude, like she was like every one of them chicks was like, "Motherfucker, you gotta compete." That's why niggas was going downtown. It's definitely an unhealthy. Da, now balance. you know Donnell. You know Donnell speaks Korean, like do, conversation, not fluently, but just casual, casual. But no, I didn't know that. We were in New York when we were shooting Chappelle show. We walk into a deli. Yeah. And you know, two Korean guys sitting talking to each other. Donnell turns up. You know how he talks. He starts going, but you know, starts doing the thing. <laughs> and I thought he was fucking with him. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Don't do that. Like, I'm so sorry, sir. And the guy, because the guy looked shocked. And then the guy started talking back. And they talked to each other for a couple seconds. And I'm like, I, I was floored, staring at him. I couldn't believe it. And he goes, oh, they thought, uh, he said, they thought we were stealing, son. And I told him <laughs> that we wasn't stealing. I think he called like a dog eating motherfucker in his yeah, own course, language. Yeah. <laughs> And he was, uh, he loved it, but he said it. Uh, you promised me you called him a doggy motherfucker. Yeah, Kasiki, uh, yeah, I went hard, son. Don't muck it up. Because yeah. he was saying something about you while you were standing there, and he didn't know that you could speak Korean. It yeah, was, but we were engaged was in the conversation. Me and the guy was engaged in the conversation. Dave thought I was mocking him. You know, Dave thought I was mocking him, but I was really having a conversation with him. So Dave didn't know. He thought I was like fucking with him, like, yo, you can't talk like that. <laughs> And then I was rocking with him. It was like, oh, shit. The, those guys were floored. I was floored. They're like, when they see a black guy go into one of those stores that speak any level of Korean, they fucking lose it. Like, how often does that happen? Well, clearly yeah. this means, one could surmise, that when you were in the Air Force, you spent a lot of time off base. I did. You would just be in town and, and just hanging out. I would just go. When we had days off, I would go to, like, these little small cities or whatever they lived. Just, they never experienced Americans, let alone a black guy, and I would catch boats and shit over there, just hang out with them. And that's how I got, uh, they got accustomed to me and I got accustomed to them. Can you read it? No, nah, I couldn't read it, but I could, back in the day, I could spell my name, but it was just mm. like, I was with trustworthy people. You know, we were all worked together and it was just like, fuck can I do, man? Let's go see what your culture is about, you know? That's cool that you learned that. That's a rare thing. That's a, probably a difficult language to pick up to. The sounds are so different. Well, to me, yeah. I think it's a testament that you're a people person, it, it, which goes back to the original point we all made. You find a way. If you want to hang out and talk to people and nobody speaks your language, I don't speak that language, yeah, you find a way. Yeah, you will. So did you learn from books? Did you take classes? Did you so it was just shared with the main gate. We worked the main gate. You would have 12-hour, 16-hour days. So you, it's a one American on one side and there's two Koreans on the other side. You could just stare at each other all day or you could just start doing word association. You know what I mean? This point net stuff. Oh, wow. What did you just Whoa. say? They said, yo, Airman, I'm main gate, Airman Rollins, man, I help you. That was the greeting. I would say when it comes some, that's what they would say. Come some da chalum imdum. But I would switch it to me. Come some da chalum imdum Rollins, imdum da toshumba. They used to be like, oh. And they would, they would, they would, they would <laughs> yo, yo, I'm telling you, son, they used to get amped when I get a joint right. They'd be like, oh, Lollis, why, why, why? They was like, Lollis, don't answer the phone because I sound like them. And then they would say something else. I didn't know. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, come something down, tell them in London, touch them They'd be like, oh. Because yeah. your, ac your accent was perfect. Yeah. I would do the same. Like when I started learning Spanish, I went to Ecuador once for like six weeks. Mm -hmm. I just started picking up Spanish. I had a driver. That I, I just met the guy, hired him, said, yeah, you drive the car. He spoke a, like a little bit of English. And, and I spoke less Spanish, but we, we did the same thing. Yeah. By the end of it, by the end of six weeks, my man, I could speak Spanish. Yeah. Wow. But I would, mimic, I would mimic the accent of whoever taught me the word. If yeah. I learned the word from an Argentinian, I'd say like an Argentinian says it. If I, That's why when I, when I do Korean or whatever, when I do it, even when I do it in my act, when it's broken Korean, people know that's the Odyssey. He got the tone of an older person, a respected person. It's the odd as she. Oh. So yeah, you, you, like they know, like, like a real Korean could tell who I was around to give me my, 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 my accent mm -hmm. or however I did it. So I have a friend it's, named Japanese Naki. I know Japanese Naki. Yeah, she, she is from Tokyo. And, and for some reason, when she was in high school, moved to Alabama, she learned English from Alabama people. <laughs> Whoa. And and which created 
Yo. One of the more hilarious accents I've ever, ever heard in oh my, my life. Oh my God, hell yeah, she got a, <laughs> I just like, where she got a country, she got a country accent. Wow. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's the best. And she likes lemon pepper chicken wings it's too. It's that so kind it's of black. stuff. Yeah. In other languages, there's all these weird tones that change the meaning it of changes words. The mean, especially like in Korean in particular, right? In, in Korean in particular, because you can tell the, the way people use their voice when they talk to people. Older people always talk down to people. It don't matter what you did. It don't matter what it is for you to celebrate. It's, it's always like, ah, it wasn't enough. Do you know that those problems in communication is why Korean Air only teaches pilots in English? They only learn and, and communicate in English. They're not How allowed to know communicate that? in Korean. How do you know that? Well, because they started, they, they recognized that there was an issue with the superior and dealing with a superior, like if you were my captain and I was your, I couldn't say certain things to you. If the fucking plane's going to crash, oh, wow. I can't simply say, you, you're doing it the wrong way. This is, you can't say it, but in English you can. So they taught them to communicate in English because it's, it changes the way, or they only use English because it changes the right. way you communicate with people. You don't yeah. have like the that cultural anything. classification Dice of a superior, mark. of a, right. you know, an older person who demands respect. I get it. And that's yeah. the one thing people don't understand about, especially Korean culture, is the level of respect that they have. Like, yeah. that's that people think it's like, oh, they don't fuck with me because I'm black. No, the level of respect <laughs> they have, they give a fuck about being older. Like, that's yeah. money, that's prestige, that's everything. You being older in Korean culture was money. You know, I, I was around say, Koreans I, a lot. I, when I, I, was I a like this, yeah. I like this cultural nuance. I feel Korea like, is a fascinating yeah. culture. Yeah, because here, they don't I have feel that, like. They don't have, they Hard have, workers. What they don't have is like, like Korean dads don't really have connection with their kids like that. They don't have like the ultimate emotional. Oh, you did a good job, shit. Don't they're very that's hard. Not even their job. Their they're job very is hard like, on their kids. That's it. In general, um, I had a, a good friend of mine who was uh, a doctor. He was going through his um, residency while he was on the national Taekwondo team. Damn. And the dude would literally be in school and he would take breaks to put his backpack on. He's filled the backpack up with, uh -huh. with books and run up staircases and go all the way back down and then go back to uh, go into the library to finish his work. Oh, wow. And then he would find a way to go to the gym every day. And he won the national championship. And he's this Korean kid. I've never met a person who worked harder in my life. To this day, I think about that dude. He was always tired. I go, how you doing, man? He goes, I'm always tired. I'm always oh, tired. But that motherfucker wow. every day would be in that gym. Yeah. Every day. Jung Sik Chang, that was his name. Is he still Jung alive? I don't know. I haven't talked Jung to him in a long time. He was uh, <laughs> Jung Sik Chang. Jung Sik Chang. He Jung was a guy Chang. that uh, was Chang. like he was probably like the star student of our team during my uh, when I was competing because he was this guy that was not just a national champion but also a guy who did it while he was in his fucking me medical residency. Like the amount of work that That's he was dope. capable of doing was insane, and he was like. The way Koreans are, in you know, the way he would describe it to me, is like nothing's ever enough. No matter what I do, it's never perfect. Like I, I no one, no one's here to praise me. The I gotta keep Dan working Miller harder. Sounds like a fun guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the younger in the military, the Korean, the Korean just, military. Yeah, like, it's like when you were like uh, when somebody was uh, outranked or whatever. They used to do this thing called education, where they could just talk to a little Korean motherfucker any kind of way they want. Yeah, and they used to have this little greeting they used to do and then you just see the, the other the young Korean just like da, 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 like they could do whatever they wanted to this motherfucker he could not do nothing but just show them respect yeah you have to take it they used to like it wasn't no rules like if you do this they would fucking beat them motherfuckers up or whatever and they came back oh, da, 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 da. but there's one thing I like that you described what? The, the the reverence for older people. Yeah, I feel like here in America we be just discard people. Yeah, really quick. Yeah, yeah. it's not wise. We you should know? get more than half price at the movies at a certain point. Yeah, come on, that's <laughs> at, at the least they could do. Well, we've we've forgotten that it's important to have people that are older than you that figure life out a little bit better than you have to help lead the way. We when forgot these guys that were running for president, the way they kept going in on Joe Biden for being old, and, yeah. you know, Trump, you know, whatever, it's whatever. So come on, man. Well, like Trump, it's a, Trump's like old it's a too. That's what I mean. I, I like when that. Trump calls the elderly the elderly, <laughs> as you, if bro. that somehow doesn't apply to him. <laughs> yo, that's how I am, yo, Dave. I did a show once, right, and I was so caught up in myself. I was like. Look at all these old head motherfuckers that I went to high school with, right? 
I was like, old ass motherfuckers that I'm their same age. I forgot the that's, connection altogether. That's real. <laughs> that's real. Son. Every I'm like, once I'm in a while, old, but they are older than me, and they're the same age. Yep, they're the exact same age. I'm talking mm. shit. Yeah, all my all my friends around my age. You don't feel it. Yeah, they're more like they 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 have like you know what I mean. They dress the part. That's they why do. it's very important for older people to actually have their shit together. Because when older people actually have their shit together, maybe people will resume the idea of respecting older people. Like maybe maybe it'll become more of a trend in the future. But when this older people are that though, old man. and this they're still automatic. crazy, when that's the problem with a guy like Trump, that old and still I won yeah. this and big, like all, all the craziness. Like the girl used to bang, called her horse face on Twitter. Like that kind of Stormy craziness. Daniels, yeah. yeah, that kind of craziness is like. But you you come to expect it of him though, and it became very entertaining, man. He made yeah. it all entertaining, but then it was For involved sure. in people's lives. But it's like clothes, like you know how <clears throat> you'll see an old person dressed up, and you know that maybe like thirty years ago that outfit was the shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, man, man, man. Yeah. But 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 maybe he's not killing it today, and, and it's it's like you just, you can see him put it on one time and just be like, "This is it, go on without me." Fashion, right. fashion, keep going. Isn't it funny how fashion eventually comes back around? And then you got dudes dressing up like they're old timey photographers. Is that, <laughs> like the vest you, and shit? I, when I grew up this summer, for me, I just grew up with it. I don't even give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. I, st I remember this summer, son, I was starting to buy shit that had waterproof on it. You know what I mean? Reversible. <laughs> I was I was like, fuck that fucking city boy shit. <laughs> I was buying shit that was fitting for the condition and the weather that I was in. Right. Clothes become utilitarian. Yeah, I was like, for you get out of a city. The guy wears work clothes for, you know. To work. To it's work. cold. That's right. Everything's practical. You know? Alas Alaskans understand that shit. Boy, do they. They get it. It'd be a hard place survive. to go. Like if, if if I had to go buy some clothes for a date in Alaska, that's like, <laughs> boy, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah, you have nothing. To do <laughs> I hope you like nothing. waiters, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few yeah, days okay. a year where it's cold, where it's not cold outside, and, the, and those days it's light twenty four hours. But those people are conditioned for it now. But that's where it's weird when it's twenty four hours. Well, that was hours part sun. of it. They, they they had all these signs up because this was like in November. All these it was like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. And the, there were these signs that said, get your happy lights. Have you heard of this? No. They're like uh, UV lights that people put in their house to, to mimic sunshine, just so that they really? don't get depressed. I couldn't, so I like, couldn't imagine. It's like they're homegrown, man. It's like all, all that's crazy. Do you remember that uh, there was a vampire movie a few years back called 30 Days of Night? I don't remember. It's all about it. vampires that show up in Alaska because there's 30 days where it never gets light out. Oh, that's a good premise. So these vampires just fuck this town up for 30 days because they know when. So they, they bring this vampire familiar that pulls the boat into the Anchorage shore or whatever the fuck they landed. And they get out in this small town and just wreak havoc on this town for 30 days. Robin Williams and Al Pacino did a movie the opposite of that. It's called Insomnia. You ever seen that? I didn't see that. I don't it think it was a weird character thing. Pacino's character uh, is a cop. Uh, this is real, and 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 Rob uh, Robin Williams is a guy he's looking for for a heinous crime, right? the The backdrop of the movie was that it was daylight for twenty four hours a day, and the guy had terrible insomnia. Oh. that's a rough way to live when it's never gets dark out i remember doing it uh when i was in anchorage i was with uh did shows up there with Ari fear and we went uh fishing and it was like two o'clock in the morning and it was bright outside i was like this is weird man i would love that it's weird but fishing at two, i would love it too fishing at two o'clock oh yeah you can just keep going there's parts where it gets dark like barely did you fly for, like, fish an hour. you fly fish no we uh were trolling for salmon how do you troll for salmon? You pull a boat, and you got like a boat, and you cast some lures in, and you're really trying to get the salmon aggravated. That's what they want. They, they're not really hungry at that point. They're trying to right. fuck. So when they, they get your lure, they're really pissed off at it more than anything. Jesus Christ. People have thought of everything. Who the yeah, fuck yeah. would think to ag aggravate a fish? Aggravate salmon, yeah. Somebody that needed that. Yeah, there's certain salmon that only eat plankton. They, don't eat, they eat microscopic shit. Like, they don't really eat fish. This is in a river you were doing it. Yeah, you, you, you pull lures by. I think that's, um, is that Chinook or Sockeye? Well, I'm trying to figure out which one doesn't really eat fish. And the only time you catch them is when you piss them off. 
I don't know nothing about my salmons. <laughs> like sockeye, I don't know my salmons had different personalities or anything, son. Well, some some fish just eat fish, right? And some fish just eat microscopic shit. And there's one particular type of salmon that only eats microscopic shit. And the way you catch it is by getting it pissed. And that's in Alaska. They do that out of like Bristol Bay. I think that's Chinook. Is that correct? I'm trying to find out if it's wrong. And uh, salmon migrate, right? Yeah, they migrate. Yeah. So and they are they, they salt water year. or are they fresh water? How they're is both. It? They're both. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. They 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 move through. I forget what it's called, but they uh, they go out to salt water and they come back to spawn in fresh water, and they have to do it in the same river. So if you dam the river up, they're fucked and they die. They don't know where to go, and they, they never wind up reproducing. Which one got the it most out. money? Like, which one is Salmon. the most? Salmon's oh. huge. Well, in, out of all fish, it's like probably tuna. Really? Yeah, but there's, you know, they're running out of tuna, man. They keep just jacking tuna. Talk to those old tuna guys in Japan, and they're like, we used to see a lot of tuna. Now you go to the tuna market, it's a fraction of what it used to be. There's really? just not as much tuna left. Yeah, people love sushi. I know they do in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of money. <laughs> what happened? He's, he's referring no. to it. I know they oh. love a, a sushi in Atlanta, bro. They had a big thing about sushi in Atlanta. What happened? About Quick sushi question. In Atlanta? Quick question before I go. This is what because this is coming up, and the next time we meet, I want to ask you about what you think. The vaccine. Are you taking it? I'll take it if it works. If I feel that. The doctors uh, have uh, all gotten their opinions behind it, and they think, you know what it is, it's like an mRNA vaccine, this new vaccine that makes your body think that it doesn't introduce actual COVID into your system and you fight it off. It makes your body think that it's COVID, and your body builds the proper proteins to fight it off. Oh, that's interesting. The, a guy explained it to us yesterday, Nicholas Christakis. He's from Yale. Um, he has soybean he, he boy. Thinks, he likes soybean. No, he doesn't. He's a good man. He uh, he he's thinks a that bean boy. he's a great man, and I, I won't let you disparage him like no, that. No, I'm not disparaging him. He's like, he's certain niggas a soybean motherfucker. He's soybean. He's a doctor. Okay, um, doctor soybean. Anyway, he, uh, he thinks the vaccine will be uh, very effective. And uh, even if you, if it doesn't keep you from getting it, it'll prevent or hopefully prevent you from getting a bad case of it. I don't know though. So, so I'm, what, I'm what would you need? Sense. Would you would you would you need just the consensus of a body of doctors you trust and people's experiences? Because people have already taken it. So, if people have taken it, like, what is the experience? They say that they, you know, had uh, they felt like shit for a few days. That's it. Yeah. Now, is that true? I mean, uh, who are they? Uh, have days. you talked to them? What's a few days? And what do you mean by feel like shit? Like, did you try running four days later and you still felt terrible? Like. So wait, apparently they're they're distributing this vaccine almost now, right? I don't think it's totally ready, but it very soon will be ready. And uh, if it's effective, they're going to encourage people to take it. It's it but makes people they say real they're nervous. They're going to have it for like doctors and like mm -hmm. essential people at first, the beginning of yeah, it, you know? first. And then um, it's going to probably people that are high risk, like older yeah. But the folks thing is, and... it's going to have people have a sense of like there is something that could be done now. Like mm -hmm. it's a sense of hope. It's a sense of progress. It's a sense of like. You know, we it was at one time we didn't even have a thought of a um, vaccine. Now we got competitors and shit. So yeah. people to think different. Uh, listen, if it works, we should take it. Just, but I know how people get real nervous. Black about that people kind don't of shit. fuck with vaccines. I told you that, son. <laughs> how do you feel about Dave, it? Dave, black people don't fuck with no vaccines, Dave. Well, I mean, I feel like it's inconclusive because your caveat was I'd take it if I felt safe about it. Yeah. Well, that's the, just, just the thing. Don't you feel like that same way? Well, of course. But so now. You know, for the first time, we're learning we're learning how a drug, the process of a drug, you know, going through trials. We're learning this literally as a nation. We're all watching this thing take place. And an accelerated version of it. An accelerated version of it. Because uh, usually a vaccine takes multiple years to develop. Yeah. So this is uh, really quick to be able to have something this quick and turn it around. And it's like those it movies effective. where they find a cure by the end and you're like, oh, that's bullshit. They're doing it. Well, not a cure, but a vaccine. It's there, a big deal. The, it's, the good thing is, if another one comes around, they're going to be more prepared to do something like this quicker. Right. The, like, I think people needed to really understand that in our lifetime, something can kill the world's economy and, and kill hundreds of thousands of people here and a million people worldwide. I, I think, think everybody understood I don't think that. we. I think we knew it, but I don't think we really expected it.
Right. You know, they knew it. They were, the Obama administration had prepared for precisely that eventuality. Sure. But I, I mean, mean, us. Of course, yeah. We, we couldn't wrap us. our mind around it. Even if they told you, even if you watched Bill Gates' speech at TED Talk in 2015, mm-hmm. you would never internalize it and think there's there's a, a pandemic coming. Now no, we know. Nobody. Now we know there is. Now the the, the we're gonna want to invest in the, the the medical infrastructure to make sure that they prepare better next time. This is hopefully people are gonna learn from this. That's oh yeah, one hundred percent. People know glass no, half full. Nothing is gonna be, nothing is gonna be new. There's nothing gonna be new about it. No. Well, the debate is is largely philosophical, right? I mean, uh, to to this end, there's two schools of thought. One school of thought is uh, it's just gonna be what it's gonna be, and we'll. You got to keep moving. Like, yeah. why close anything? And the other school thought, which I thought was, you know, well, this is more than just a philosophy. It was it was a science. Right. Remember, the premise when they locked us up was we have to wait to catch up to our medical infrastructure. Yeah. So we don't overburden our medical infrastructure. We got to suppress the disease till we can build up the infrastructure. And they gave us an early estimate of two weeks. This is how a comedian does when, when a comedian is doing a real long set, he goes, one more thing before I go. And then he does that four or five times, and you realize, oh, this guy's going to do another hour. Oh, yeah, that's so fucking rude. Because, yeah, yeah but it. you know yeah. that trick? Yeah. It, 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 that's what the pandemic, the quarantine felt like. Mm. Two more weeks, three more weeks. Maybe we'll open bars and, re- you know, that kind of shit. But do, there's no way to control it other than create it yourself, right? What do you mean? Like the the whole vibe of the the scene, right? The vibe of which scene? The pandemic. You said, how do we get used to it? What can we do about it? Well, he's also saying, here's the thing. We never signed up to let people tell us that we can and can't take risks or go to work. And by saying that if you do it, you're going to kill other people, that's what changed the game. Right. And so everybody has to figure out how much of that they're willing to accept <clears throat> and how much of that are they not and whether or not they're willing to take a shot, um, take this uh, this vaccine without you know, knowing the long-term effects of it or worrying about the long-term effects of it. And some people are naturally averse to taking any kind of medication. They don't want to do it. And other people are like, if you tell me it's good and all the doctors agree right. and then it'll help mankind, I'll fucking do it. That's how I feel. If I Listen, polio, okay? Shit doesn't exist anymore. Smallpox doesn't exist anymore, at least not in the numbers that it used to, yeah, right? Yeah, you got the all old because, vaccine for that. That's but the that's old vaccine. But that's because of vaccines. Like, yep. the idea that vaccines have done bad things only or that they're dangerous only, it's crazy. Like, vaccines are the responsible for the giant it's not, population It's not vaccines. But to, I think the, at the core of this is you just trust. Yes. Do you trust these sources? And people realize that they're at the mercy of someone that they don't necessarily trust. Right. That's the, that's yeah. the rub. Well, maybe maybe that's don't, the don't problem. Don't touch your own face and don't go outside. I'll tell you when to come out. Cause love a renowned liar. Yeah, right. It's a tough one. That was a tough one. It's, it, especially here, it goes something really, touches something really sore in the core of an American's identity. Like you said, how can you tell me to do this? Yeah. It's crazy, man. This, this was a tough one here. It's a weird one. It's yeah. a, it makes us redefine what it is to be a person. You know, like if uh, all of a sudden you have other people that got elected into a position of power, that's all they did. They won a popularity contest and they're dictating th- whether things go this way or that way. And they don't necessarily have the right answer. They just have their own answer. And Dallas is doing it different than this town. And, you know, Washington State's doing it different than Nevada. Everyone's doing it different. But everybody's trying to do it also. Yeah, but governors can tell you what you can and can't do. It gets real weird. And I get it. They're trying to keep the hospital numbers down. But you, you told us it was going to be two weeks. Like you guys said two weeks. And now here we are like nine months later. And everyone's just waiting for, I, only for a vaccine. I'm but like, I'm not speaking about, you know, the, if, if it's right, if it's wrong. I'm not speaking about it like that. I'm just saying whatever it was, that was very difficult. Yeah. That was very difficult. Very difficult. You know, I was fine, but not knowing when you can work, not being able to move around, not being able to see my mother. You know, you, you would have never thought. If someone had told me 11 months ago, even the night before, they, the last night we went to tour, where we were in Milwaukee. Yes, it was Paps. And the last show, it was the last night between shows, right? It's a two-show night. Uh, and the energy had changed. It went from festive to like, people look worried when I got off stage. And Tom Hanks had had it, the one NBA guy who had touched everything and had it. 
and, and then the horn starts ringing that they're going to shut the country down. I, I literally go, that's impossible. Gonna shut, what, are you going to shut down the world? It's impossible. This is, what I, this is what I thought, my initial reaction. But the energy changed. Now I go out and do the second show, and immediately, I, I wasn't even thinking about this shit earlier that night. I come out on stage, you know, everybody reach your hand, like, hey, and I thought about it. Okay, I start, you know, shaking people's hands. Oh, worried. But yeah, it was if, but, but yeah. the day before, wouldn't have even been concerned about it. Went into the green room for 40 minutes and talked to people who've been glued to the television watching the news. And then they they scared the shit out of me. My behavior changed almost instantly. It was interesting. I don't want to get too heavy. I mean, I'm only hanging out for No, a man. No, no it's, such thing. it's not too heavy. That's exactly how I felt about it, too. I remember I, I shook a dude's hand on a flight. I was flying to Vegas for the fights. It was like one of the last fights before they shut it down. And uh, some dude goes, I don't know. You want to shake hands? I go, I'll shake your hand. And we shook hands. He had a mask on already. And I was, was like, wow, for... he was ready to go down. He was, I think this was the very beginning of March. This was the, fir the first time I would have been um, tested in any capacity was when I did your show that time. Mm. That was the first time I had an antibody test or anything. I would have never expected that here we would be deep into November and we're all still kind of locked down. When this started, you lived in L.A. You had no plans to come here. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. in Texas. Think about it. Your whole, your whole yeah. life has changed. What's interesting about this time, which is another thing we should talk about next time I come, is that the in mass, it feels like we're rewriting our social contracts. Mm. You know, the whole thing. And, and COVID is an accelerant on this process that I could have never imagined. Yeah. You know, they're, they're locked inside, man. People are, are stuck in a house with their choices. Do you like your house? Do you like who you're with? Do you like these things you've accumulated? I hope you like them because you're stuck with them. I make great choices. I like my choices. You know, when I was faced with it like that, I was like, Phew. I had it much better than many people. But imagine people doing that in mass. It's pretty powerful. It's a pretty powerful thought. What does this do to a society? This type of isolation and 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 almost forced reflection. Yeah, for, which is not a, necessarily a bad thing. Right, and. We've always talked about how life is a rat race, right? People get just get stuck in this rat race. It feels never ending. It's not good that all these people lost their jobs. It's not good that all these people are going to lose where they live. No, but not at all. it might help some people recognize that if you just keep going in this rat race, it just it never ends. You got to figure out you a way out, out. And now is a better time to figure out a way out than ever because you kind of have to. You kind of have to, and society as it existed ten months ago, it's not the same it's place. Not the same. And you what's the country? That. What's the country that there's a country, maybe somewhere in South Pacific or something, that measures their their success as a nation with, with what they call their gross national happiness. It's a totally different premise. What country is that? I can't remember. Maybe maybe you Google gross national happiness. Jamie will figure it out. Thanks, fingers. <laughs> <laughs> It says Bhutan. There it is, Bhutan. Bhutan. There you go. This is a real. This is a real principle. It's a philosophy that guides the government. Think about this. This is a philosophy that guides the government of Bhutan. It includes an index which is used to measure the collective happiness. This is the metric that they use to define their success. If they tried that in America, they turn into an app and it would fuck up everything. Oh my God! People would just be striving to win the points on the app. It would make people <laughs> insane. They'd get addicted to trying to be a better person. But what? A, but what? <laughs> This is this is a vastly this is a vastly better metric. I'm not you know a communist and all that shit, but I I think that I know too many people who are very wealthy, who have what I consider a poor quality of life. Yeah. Just because, the like you say, the wealth is the point. Yeah. They chased it. They chased it. And they didn't have any friends. Right. You're didn't very wealthy. Ones. You're hunting. You love your dog. Your dog <laughs> hangs out with you like fucking Scooby Doo. Your kids like your kids like you. You you you're living an adventure of a life. Now you're doing the same thing you were doing in LA in a totally different city, just because you're following that gnawing feeling. I gotta be free. Whatever it is, there's a little bit of that, and then there's also like uh, I think you're better off living in a place with less people. I think when you live to be, you live in a place with like LA, it's great in that there's a lot of resources, there's a lot of shit happening, there's a lot of people. But it's bad in that sometimes people, it diminishes 
the value of people a little bit when there's so many of them. Like people stop thinking about In people's LA, being as valuable. I don't even think that it's, it's that. For me, the thing, the thing that I always had a hard time with was the point of the place was show business. Yeah. So when I was coming up in my career, everything reminded me of the things I didn't have. And mm. nothing let me appreciate where I was. And mm. then, now I love it. It's a winner circle. I'm doing great. So I, <laughs> I get in any restaurant, I got to get, you know. Yeah. But, but I remember what it felt like being there. It's like, that's why I don't live there. No disrespect to LA, but it's like, if I like a restaurant, I don't move in and say, I'm just, I just come when I want to eat. I'm going to live in the restaurant. I think your, your idea of living in another place gives you perspective. There's no it's, question. It's the best way to have perspective. If you're stuck in that showbiz world, you know, that becomes your culture. Your, your culture is like this tiny fraction of the human beings in the world. And so many people just start relating only to people in that culture. Like that, you yeah. can get real isolated that way. Yeah, it's just not, yeah. And, and, and for what we do for a living, how is that conducive to, to anything no, that we want to so achieve? so wise. Artistically. No, it's a very wise decision. Like really wise. Yeah. It's, that smells great, man. I told you, son. That's the one. Son. That candle is the shit. I'll do a commercial for it right now. You can cut this out of thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Chappelle, and this is a black ash candle. It smells way better than it sounds. Take it from me and Ashy Larry. Black ash, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> cut. <laughs> one take. Yeah. That's beautiful. Give it to me. I'll light it. Oh, yeah. Do that. Get the scent going. That's so uh, when you're touring now, do you just pick a city and say, oh, I'm going to do Denver three nights in a row, find me a venue? Well, I don't know if I want this on the show, but just between us. Oh. Well, you could. I don't know. I'm not trying to. We don't have to put anything on the show. that you. But I, I want to post up here for like, you know, a few weeks. It's cold in Ohio. I like playing outdoors. I like this Stubbs place a lot. Beautiful. It's, it's rocking. So I come, that's why I say I, we do the damn thing. I'm thinking around December, January. Uh, stay here for four to six weeks, try to finish the act that I was, boy, I was close. When we when we were supposed to do those shows and-, and Man, that summer was gonna be fire, yeah, yeah. son! <laughs> me, and, oh. me and Joe Rogan went on sale with some tickets. And this yep. is this Joe, we must have sold 36,000 tickets lot. in like 10 minutes. It was, it was insane. We were so excited to do the show and like what, a week or two before, yeah. the, the shutdown happened. I was uh, part of that shit, son. That was about to be nice. So well, with, the ones we did were fun too, though. The, the, what was it? Tacoma. Oh, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, no, I've never seen you have bed. Remember we went and watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and all that. Yes, shit? it was so much fun. At two o'clock in the morning. The that was the night. conversation. Was I there? We were. Yeah, you we were, were there. Where, yeah, you were, were there. We? That was when Utah? we were in. Uh, no, that wasn't no, Utah. No, Seattle. That was yeah. It was Tacoma. Tacoma, Tacoma the Seattle. Yeah, area. Tacoma Dome. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. fun, man. That, that was show fun. was fire. That was fun. That was so and much fun. The, the conversations we'd have in the, in the green room, you know, every every tour has its own culture, but the culture of this tour that we did together was great. Yeah, Ian Ed was. Who was traveling with you? Yeah. But he was always famine, man. He was always tired from not getting the right protein. Ian, <laughs> Ian. yo, no. this nigga slept the whole joint, son. But Ian, Ian, and I—the first time I had ever left the country, I was like eighteen. I had my nineteenth birthday there in Scotland. I did the Edinburgh Festival, and, and Ian Edwards was on the festival doing a show. And we, you know, we black dudes from from the west, like way west, man, we hit it off. We would crack each other up. And uh, and then bam, I just see him, you know, on the road. Made me feel twenty years younger. And we, you know, we all sit around the green room. The lights are red. Music's good. Really good vibes. Really good company. It was it was a perfect mashup. We you did two you, you nail it with the red lights in your room. It changes everything. I'm gonna steal that from you. <laughs> oh man, man, please be my guest. Maybe I'll go with purple. <laughs> just to it's, mix it it's up. It's all about the ambiance. Because yeah. I used to just sit in a room with hard white lights. And the fruit plate that I don't know how long it had been there, and and no music, and you know the early days, yeah. no friends. You just sitting in there with a, a maybe maybe a joke book, just waiting, just waiting yeah. all the time, just waiting, just waiting. And, and at some point, you realize, well, this has got to be fun. I can't just be sitting in these rooms looking at these walls. I can't, well, who the fuck has to bring a book to work? Right. <laughs> it was that. It was that. Right. So I just started sexing it up, like just having fun, and 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 then when you start getting big on the road, you start bringing your friends out and all that shit. 
then it gets really fun. And you become like a surrogate family. The longer you stay out together, you know, you learn each other's creature habits, you find out shit about each other you don't know. You see Fuck what, about the shacks, son. You see what, what people are made of. Man, we had so I love much the road. fucking we man, we had so much fucking fun. Yeah, you would love that Ohio shit. Daddy, remember that I night? I wish I could have gone, but that's when I was planning on coming remember here. Remember that I night was that we not my, doing any stand up? I had my drone that night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had my drone out. I don't even know how to fly my own drone. One of my friends was flying the drone, and it was late at night. He was like, yo, get the drone shots. So we get the drone shots. And then the drone went up in the air. It's like about 2 o'clock in the morning, and we thought we lost the drone. We didn't see no red lights, no blue lights. It was just God. We was like, oh, shit. Nigga, we got to go find the drone. We like, we about to get out of here. We thought we lost the drone. The drone was supposed to be at, um, at the um, bed and breakfast. How, how well can you control those things? Like the people that know how to drive it, they can control it where they can't see it through like measurements and distance and everything. We These had things good are good though. They had buttons on there, you know, they could track track a person or an object if you wanted to, to just follow a car, anything like that. Really? And you remember in L.A., the paparazzi started doing all this crazy drone shit. I'm sure they got you. The, we, the drone guys. We had the drone shot. I was drinking coffee. You hear the buzzing. <laughs> yeah, you hear the shit. And yeah. you know that there's a dude a block away or somewhere. Isn't that weird? Like, they could they could kind of find you now with a drone. When we did that... the drone shot from the place, we thought we lost it. We was going to go and search. I was like, get my motherfucking drone, nigga. Right? We get ready, get everybody in the car to go find this drone. We don't see it in the sky nowhere. Then all of a sudden, it was like a movie. We saw these blue lights come up, and we heard this, zzz, and that motherfucker came. Everybody was like, oh, shit, they're going to drone. And that shit came all the way back down, son. It was oh, that was beautiful. a good shot, too. That was a great shot. I met the governor of Texas. Uh -huh. I went to the mansion to hang out with him, Governor Abbott, and I had whiskey and barbecue with him. And while we're hanging out at his house, a drone comes by and hovers in oh, the that's sky the, that's the one the light goes on and we're watching this drone the security guys are trying to figure out where the drone's coming from and who's got the drone mm -hmm. and it turned out to be like the fire department really the fire department has their own drone and they're flying their drone around looking for stuff that makes a <clears> lot of <throat> sense man but they they're like that's like how you can spot fires how they oh, can wow. figure out what's going on if there's a, some sort of a car accident they could probably send a drone out get video image of it so they know what to expect Hell when they yeah. get there makes sense right Yep. There's a new car like that. Some it's a drone? The, the headlights are drones. You got to look this up, man. <laughs> what is Put, it? Like the headlights fly away? What do you mean? The headlights are attached to the car, right? They're on. If you get out of the car, they pop off and start flying around and make a path of light. <laughs> that's the, that's, I think that's the thing. Audi created an autonomous off-roader that uses flying drones to illuminate the road instead of headlights. Show Joe the video. <gasps> what? It's ill as fuck. It's, it's, oh, shit. Oh, my God. They're ahead of the car. The f fucking headlights are ahead of the car. It's the illest shit I've ever seen. That's some Star Wars shit, right? Yeah, precision drones. If, if you have the key in your pocket, they'll follow you like if you're walking <laughs> in the woods. It's crazy. <laughs> That thing looks wild. It looks like some shit Jamie Foxx drives already. He already has one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jamie Foxx probably. The gas station. Jamie Foxx probably already has this. He has one of those Resvanis. Isn't that what it's called? It's like a Resvani tank. I ran into him at the gas station. I was like, who the fuck is driving that thing? <laughs> Jamie yeah. Foxx, what's up? That thing looks awesome, though. That Audi, that's a slick looking car, too. It's crazy. There's a, somewhere online, there's a video demonstration. And it's probably going to be electric. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, everything's it's, uh, electric now. The concept. Look at this. Look at this shit. It's that. Donnell, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Watch when it's driving. Oh, shit. That's the headlights? Yes. The headlights are ahead, making the road bright. Yo, that's some gangster shit right there, son. They're flying like little UFOs. That's nuts. Could you imagine if you saw that drive by you somewhere? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, my God. I think I saw an alien. That's crazy. That's going to be the future. Look at that shit. They fly ahead of you and illuminate the road. That's bananas. And you just have to trust them with your little bitch-ass lights. You got some little bitch-ass fog man. lights. You have to trust the daddies that are flying around. That's how the government's going to control you. They man, I want to slice keep you, pizza, Keep you man. going on their road. No, no, no. You don't want to look at that road. That road's dark. <laughs> the drones only go on this road. Come on. Son, where can I get pizza? <laughs> 
probably a pizza place. <laughs> find a guess. Joe, come on, man. You started like this, man. Why are you doing this to me, man? We'll find a pizza place for you. What do you? What kind of pizza you want? Thin crust. I could get a pizza, pizza. A pizza, pizza. A piece of a piece, pizza. A piece of pizza. Yeah. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> I gotta get some more gauze too, man. Are you alright? Let's right? take. Let's take five. You wanna get some meat? Yeah. Can we? Yeah, get we some can meat? just. We can just end this. It's already four thirty-five. <gasps> We've been doing this forever. Oh wow. He and I have been doing this for four and a half hours. I know, right? man. He's been disrespecting my gunshot wound. I didn't. I told Jamie. I didn't, right? Yeah. Never. This is not true. None of this is true. Teamwork is dream work. Um, thanks, Dave. That was fun. Oh my God. Dude, Next I, time I we'll do it for real. Like, for real, for real. Like really yeah, for sure. hundred percent. I would son. love it. Oh, Thank you, son. Donnell, that was fun. Thank you. Thanks for the candle. Thanks for the cream. Thanks for everything. Black ass bitch. Thanks for everything. Uh Donna What about my show? RFK Stadium. RFK Stadium. Uh DC Improv, the traditional Thanksgiving show. And the date is? November 28th. And Pixar's uh, Soul comes out Christmas Day on Let's Disney+. Keep, Plus. keep people focused on the show. What? I'm sorry, the 28th? Joe. Joe, you keep disrespecting me, man. I want, I want people to come it. and see you. The way you say it. I'm though. trying to find out where the tickets are. There it is. All right. There it is. So Damn, drive-in man. comedy at RFK. No, I'm trying to promote your show. Sorry. ParkUpDC.com. So go to ParkUpDC.com. It's the 28th. Your, right your traditional you. yes that's Saturday thank you sir right, well, thank you Joe. I enjoyed I it man. oh I love you too I love your dog she's awesome alright bye everybody bye.